Welcome back, BMX nerds. I missed you so much. This week's episode of Canode Knows, brought to you by Dig BMX, is with none other than Austin Augie. Him and I go further back than you might think. He lived in Arizona for a long time, like, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. And talking to him about some of the memories that we share is crazy because I couldn't remember some of them. Like, he brought back memories of going to Texas Toast in, I don't know, 2014 or something. But Austin has the spirit, man. He he has the type of energy, like, if he sets his mind to something, he's going to do it. He's a manifester, and uh, I respect the hell out of him. Smash that like button. Hit the notification bell so you get reminded when these drop. And if you're listening, go and leave a five-star review so that the uh, the algorithm lords can bless us. But really, all I want is the messages, man. You guys sending me messages telling me to keep going is the best. So thank you guys for all the love and support. That's enough of me. Here's Asanagi. Got it. Hey, what's up, Asanagi? What's up, Bobby Canode? <laughs> Mr. You- Canode. Hey, man, it's been a while. Dude, it's been, you were just saying, it was what, uh, Long Beach when we rode around with Jeff Westcott in the parking lot. And even at that point, it had been a while. Like, you lived in Arizona at some point. Do you remember how we met? Because I can't remember. Yeah, I remember the first day. No shit. Tell me about it. Yeah. Well, I I took a, I was living in Arizona at that, at that guy's, you know, we could get more into that, but I was living at that trailer that I, I found on Craigslist on my way from Indiana to Arizona. And uh, where was it? I don't know, bro. It was somewhere outside of Phoenix. And it, he was just definitely a child molester or something. Is it? He's a pedophile. I had to like put my bike in front of the door when, when I lived there. But um, yeah, what? Tony Maloof. <laughs> yeah, Tony Maloof uh, told me, he's like, yeah, you got to meet up with Canote. He's the guy to know out here. And uh, I remember I came to Tempe for the first time and we filmed that crook nose manual. On what spot? Remember the crook over the crook over nose manual on ASU? Yeah, ASU. yeah. That, yeah. Was that our first clip ever, huh? First clip. Hell yeah! I remember I was dude, those days, man. I was so hungry, but I was so excited to like my first clip I ever actually filmed within BMX was with you. To be honest, no shit. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love Pretty that. Cool, I remember because I have so much guilt because when we were filming for Lightworks, you did on this electrical box setup, you did an ice pick to hop up manual on the next one. Do you remember that? Yep. Lost it. It's gone forever. And I'm like, it's okay, Fuck. man. We have it in our memories. It's here. Yeah. For real. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, man. Those are, those are wild times, man. Arizona. That whole time period is such a blur. I think at that point I was maybe working for Sabrosa or just getting yep. into it. Um, yeah. Because all those guys would come to the crib that you were at. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I met. I met a lot of those dudes. Joris. I met him out there. Yeah. Uh, Simone taught me how to do 180 over tooth 180s in that little Sick. parking lot next to the apartment complex. Amazing. Remember that with Chadwick? <laughs> Big. It's all a blur, dude. It's yeah. so wild. I remember like big moments for me like getting to film the shadow sabrosa team i think they were filming goody and chadwick when was one night was like bobby you want to just take over filming duties so that so that chadwick could chill and yeah. i was just like oh yes please and i was just like <laughs> I, I got to film simone i got to film jerice and uh Lashawn. it was fun man and yeah dude that was yeah um <clears throat> Jor- joris was just out here he just left he just texted me this morning he just left yesterday just left new york city yesterday yep sick How's he's he doing? For 10 days. He's doing good, man. He's, he's, he's a really kind soul. And I really, I, I enjoyed his presence. And um, it's just crazy to, to know these guys for like 10, 10 plus years. You know, it's been 10 years or so since I've lived in Arizona. Yeah. And it's uh, a whole different lifetime. Just, like, yeah. And just, I was listening to Kramis is a uh, podcast yesterday. That's why I hit you up actually. Cause I really enjoyed the Kramis interview. Thank you. And you kept, you kept, you kept mentioning that you can't remember shit. <laughs> yeah. I really like, can't. Why do you think that is? What happened? Did you hit your uh, head or something? Yeah, plenty of hitting my head, and then in my 20s, just partying my ass off and drinking, doing drugs, smoking weed, and uh, maybe it's like subconscious, just suppression of it. I've yeah. I've always lived for the moment, and I've, you know, I've Probably gone hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. So but We went hard, man. We, yeah. we went hard back <laughs> yeah. in those days. <laughs> I swear I was living my 20s as if I was going to die when I was like 27, so I just like had a real fuck it mentality, and... I don't, I, I'm like smart and I can remember stuff, you know, if I studied for a test, I can do well. But as far as like the whole 
you know, specific memories, I can't remember. Like that's like meeting you for the first time. I don't remember. Which, no offense, I, no, I don't okay. remember. No, no. Meeting better. You don't remember my, much of my times when yeah. I was. <laughs> I was more of I was a shithead kid. But I remember you being like the new kid in the crew. You were around all the time, and like yeah. you know, I, I enjoyed that. I we lovingly would you know give you shit, and I you know I I I do look back fondly on those days. That's <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. And then I remember. Yeah. Yeah, G Molly T was living out there, and you guys partnered up and worked on some shit. Yeah, that was we cool. Were, we were gonna, we were gonna do a, dude. That that was like, I think about how I was riding back then, and I compare it to like how I ride now. But like that, those days, our first clip was that three sixty down that fifteen at Tempe ASU. Damn, my front wheel yeah. exploded. Yeah. Um, and then the second clip we tried to film was that drop in where I broke my kneecap oh, and it kind yeah. of stunted the whole hunt clip or the yeah. hunt. Was that's what it was that was for the hunt yeah justin and cosman's lives, contest right yeah that was such yeah. a cool i wish they still did that man because these kids now that are coming up would really flourish yeah for real of, i mean feast 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 kind of did something like that yeah but that's um, well did they do it for like amateurs uh no no probably not but i mean the i guess video Trent, contest Trent was sick yeah hobie's pro yeah i guess you're right it was all pros yeah that would be well i guess wasn't the hunt no, no, I, I forget Chad, the I details think, of the hunt. No, Corey Rogowski wasn't pro, or I don't think he was pro rider. I don't think he was pro at that time. He was he was doing shit. A lot of people were. That's why. Greg Molinterno lives uh, about two miles away from me out here in New York now. Yeah, that's what's up. I saw him in yeah. the background of the Odyssey Sunday Dawn of the Streets video with he's with Aaron, here, Aaron Ross going. Yeah, I know. I was so stoked to see his face. He yeah, also looks a, very healthy. Like he doesn't eat meat. Good for him. Yeah. He likes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and he likes quesadillas. <laughs> yeah, you know, man, I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, man. <laughs> I was waiting for the you know, man, to come. <laughs> Shout oh, out, man. Greg. I love that dude so much, man. He, uh, he helps me on some of my photo shoot stuff out here. That's sick. He's very he, talented behind the camera. I think yeah, underrated yeah. as far as, because he was the first dude that I saw. I'm sure he's not the first person ever to do it, but to take an HD camera, put a fisheye on it, and then crop it to be four by three. So it looked like... Yeah, yeah like standard def, but it was HD and that that's a good look. Like some of his old, if, is, do you think, is your part still online? The one that you guys worked on together? Yeah, that's probably one of the only, it's, it sucks. That's probably one of the only parts we ever put out really was that one goalie factory part. I, I maybe had a couple more, I can't really recall, but yeah, it's still up there. One of my, that was such a cool period of time. Like I would work at the corners pasty and. Yeah, uh, I remember go, that. Go in between like getting fucked up at night and then waking up super early before I had to go to work and wash dishes and. Uh -huh. um, dude, and then I broke my leg with him filming for that. Remember the broken leg scenario shit? No. It was crazy. Tell, tell me about that? the broken leg. No. You don't remember that? If you dude, tell this, me, I'll probably remember. Bobby, this is so instilled in my memory, and I, I kind of have a lot of resentment towards LaShawn still for this, but I forgave him. But I had that. I remember I lived with LaShawn Kobza. For a bit, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I lived with LaShawn. That was, that was rough. That was kind of hard to do because those guys partied heavy, and I had a broken leg, man. I snapped my leg. And I, it was a gnarly break. It was like nine months I was out. And I had that big, remember you had that, you had that Halloween party. And I came as Franklin Roosevelt or who, who was the president that was in this, was in the uh, wheelchair? Wheelchair? FDR? No. Yeah, I, yeah it I must be FDR. F, yeah, yeah. I came as FDR because I was super <laughs> fucked up. And I had this like cage on my leg. And I think LaShawn was just like fucking with me and I got really pissed off and he took a drink and poured it on my head. We were Ooh. joking, and I'm not mad at him yeah. anymore, but, it, but, you know, we get fucked up. We do things. But I always remember that party. I remember being in the backyard of yours, the fire going. That's part of the reason I don't remember stuff is throwing parties like that. <laughs> Dude, you had some fun-ass parties, though, man. One of, one of the weird memories is I remember somebody doing a backflip off of my roof just to flat ground yep. grass, and then people, like, jumping through the fire pit, and that's all kind of, like, just vague memories. And, and then the, the box, the, yeah. the grind box you had? Yeah, I, I, I do roof. remember that. Yeah, wait, we we'd we'd ride off the roof. Did you grind off the roof? Did I we did something. I might have tried. I tried to grind off the roof onto. I don't remember, man. It was. I know what you did. You dropped off my roof onto the sidewalk and then pedaled and then did a G turn on the ledge for a, a clip. And yep. that might be in Lightworks. I think it's in Lightworks. <laughs> it was. Hopefully, yeah. you can pull these clips. Yeah, for real. Shit. Well, we got a lot of ground to cover since then, man. Dude, I'm ready, man. I'm excited to kind of just, it's cool because my life out here really isn't, I, I, I'd say I'm still heavily involved within the BMX scene, but I don't get to really have these type of conversations with 
friends that um, kind of know me from the past when like I was like only a BMX rider, you know. So it's kind of really yeah. fun to have these. Um, I don't know, just reminiscing conversations. Yeah, yeah, reminiscing it feels good. Uh, yeah, lots change, man. For real, and we've all gotten to watch you along the way. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, I, I, I definitely don't uh, don't hide anything, do I? Yeah, show every day and then boom. <laughs> I guess I'm obsessed with it, man. It's weird. Let's let's start with, you know, leaving Arizona. Why did you leave Arizona? Where did I go from Arizona? I went to California yeah. because I was living in AZ that time. And like, that was like, I heavily uh, regard that time as like, really like the, made me kind of come up. I met Jeff Z through that time, you know, Drew Hosselton, Eric Baum and all those guys. Like it was, you know, I was never close to him then, but you know, that was like, I moved from Indiana. I first off, dude, I came from, we're missing like a whole part there to be honest. Cause David Grant, I was living in Indiana working at a, uh, I just won street series. And David Grant was like, dude, you got to come to Arizona, like come to Arizona. And I don't think he knew that I would actually do it. So I worked, I worked at this college debt collecting place. Oh no, actually, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. That was after I left and had to go back home. I became broke. Okay. So, so I lived in Arizona and then uh, I went to go, uh, where did I go? I went to, fuck dude. I went and stayed <laughs> at the cement face house in Long Beach. That sounds, stayed. that sounds familiar. Yeah, dude, no, we're missing the whole part here. I'm, I'm, my brain is uh, scrambled now because at one point I went back home to Indiana before I went to California. Okay. Um, and I think that was after maybe I broke my leg. Yeah. You um, went from Arizona back home, saved up and then moved to Cali. Yeah. That's I, what I was it just, was. Yeah. That's what it was. So yeah, I went to Arizona, went back home to Indiana and worked at a, uh, a college debt collecting place called Navient. What was that like? Collecting that a, college debt? Yeah. I would call people on the phone and they really hated me there. I, I only worked there for like three months. But I was like the top collector. Right? Nice. I was like one of the top guys. Why? But they didn't like. Why how do you? I, they didn't why do you like think? How, because they didn't like how I was collecting it. Because I was super like nice to the people. I was like, listen, man, these people are resent, resent. You know, they're gonna they're gonna keep calling you. Let's just get something. You know, let's get something figured out here. We'll get oh, it done. Nice. And we'll stop calling you for a bit so you can have some breathing room. And they go, you can't tell them that. You got to tell them it's like you got to be kind of more aggressive. And I was like, I'm not gonna. These guys, you know. Yeah. And, Aggressive uh, or effective boss. Which yeah. one would you like? That's and, a talent, uh, man. That's great. I was good at it, man. But it really was like, it was like, I was surrounded by super fat people and like, they would love their, they would come back to the table and be like, yeah, man, guess what's up for lunch today? They have the bagel bites. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> like fucking bagel bites, man. <laughs> Not the bagel bites. Indiana. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, dude, I, I, uh, I illegally downloaded the alchemist, the, the book, the alchemist which is like you know what number one self-help book yep and i read it uh in like six hours didn't do any work read it for six hours and then um i remember remember i i wrote down in my journal while i was at work i just put down i will win i will win i will win i wrote it like a thousand times in this journal and it was in regards to the street series nice and uh yeah i stole my dad's truck went down to the street series and won that uh that's when Glenn not Taylor's gloss over did you say stole your dad's truck yeah, well, he 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 let me borrow it okay. uh, to to go to work and back, but he 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 like, clocked the miles on it, and he told me if I ever you know don't leave town with it. Okay. So I didn't tell him. I just dipped to Chicago and went met up with Tony Maloof. That's oh. the first time I met Dan Lacey. No um, shit. Yeah, that's also when uh, rest in peace. But Glenn Sailors died the day of of uh, of Don was uh, not Don the Streets, but of, of Street, Street series. series. Damn. The day that he would have won that shit too, man. I I fully believe that if Glenn was alive. During that time, he would have won. And he was from Kokomo, Indiana. Rest and, in peace. Yeah, dude. I remember Brian Kaczynski at Street Series made everyone take their pegs and slam it against the, the concrete. It was a really powerful moment. And um, I had to put on for him because he was from Indiana. And then, um, yeah, I won Street Series. And that was like the kick in the ass. Like, oh, I can do this shit. Hell yeah. But fun fact, bro. And I hope Lacey fucking hears this because I love him to death now. We hated each other for a bit, but now I love him. I didn't get any money for that. What they kept, they kept the fucking money. They like <laughs> he got the ring. It's okay. They kept the fucking money, and I was dead broke. I had to like call my dad, and have him send me money for me to get home with gas because I had no gas money. Dad, sorry, I stole your truck, and I won that a contest, dad. but <laughs> I'm not getting any money. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, guys, I won this shit. Like, I, I did it. Yeah. Uh, send me some gas money, and they, they, he, you know, they had to save me. Damn. Um, 
yeah, this is wild. I, it's re really crazy to think about this stuff because um, I remember it fully. I remember meeting Timmy Theus and uh, yeah, dude, these guys really, it was a kick in the ass. And I went back to Navient, worked another two months and then just shot to California. So I've always had a problem saving up. Like I've been bad with saving up money. Like what was your, did you have like a plan when you were working at this no. call center and shit or like just, dude, I still don't have a plan. Bobby. I'm still, <laughs> I still am not financially responsible. Dude. I have this studio. Can't even afford to pay the rent at the moment. It's like, I don't really live my life where uh, I have a plan, but if I have an objective You'll that get I there. want to achieve, I have a dream, I'm going to get there. You know, there's nothing that's going to kind of detour me away from, from getting to that point. Yeah. Even if there's a little bit of a, you know, a low point or a struggle that I have to uh, kind of overcome. Which you know always I mean? happens. So always, we'll pause at winning Chicago street series and yep. let's come flash forward to today. Cause you wrote down, I will win. I will win. Are you still doing shit like that? Are you still writing, writing in your journal? Uh, and well, if so, more, what are you writing? Well, now I don't do the journal stuff. I have a daily journal. It's called a, it's called YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I speak, I speak stuff into existence now more so than I write it. Um, I just, I have so many other things that I'm doing. And I, I it's funny. I actually was watching this guy on, on YouTube yesterday about journaling and writing down a sentence a day. Uh, maybe I will start, but, um, Right now, I just speak shit into existence. I try to like reiterate, uh, not reiterate, but um, what's it called when you when you, when you say something over and uh, manifest maybe, but I try to say it over mantra? and over again. Yeah, you know, I, I try to say I'm going to be a photographer. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to shoot big campaigns. I tell myself that every day I wake up and- That's dope. Yeah, dude, it's, it's important to have that, man, because you kind of get lost in this world if you don't have a, a push or, yeah, uh, or you can... an objective get comfortable in your job. And then, you know, before you know it, 20 years flashes by and you haven't accomplished any of those dreams that you thought about once. But if you like really put it into existence, then it'll come. Yeah. And as, some people think that you proven. can just, you, you can just speak it. And, uh, okay. If I just speak it, it will come, but no, but you have to really put the work in and, and, and be willing to, uh, to sacrifice things and, and do things. But yeah, yeah, like I that book, The Secret, is bullshit, but it's yeah. not bullshit, you know? Like, it starts well, with because, that, but then you take the steps that are required. To yeah, because there. people think they're going to read it and, like, boom, their life is going to change it, but they don't ever implement the actual things that they're saying, you know what I mean? But, yeah. No, I'm going to manifest $10,000 right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. But, I mean, it, it did work for me, man. I, I, I recently broke both my my cameras, these cameras here that I shoot on. Oh, no. Are, and... um. I, I, they've been at the repair shop. It cost me like four grand or two grand to get them fixed. And I told my girlfriend, I was like, something's going to come along. Like, I'm going to get a job and they're going to pay for this for me. And today they, uh, the job actually paid for the, cause I'm going to Italy what? tomorrow and they paid for the cameras to get repaired. Sick. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> That's Maybe amazing. it's just dumb luck, but. Nah, to... we'll chalk it up to manifesting, dude. That's great. Yeah, maybe. Hell yeah. What are you drinking? Zevia. You ever heard Is of Zevia? Arizona drink? Hell no, no it's all like, over the place. Advocare? Ad no. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of those. <laughs> it tastes like soda, but it's sweetened with stevia, so it doesn't affect your insulin. It doesn't spike your insulin and blood sugar levels. Oh, so it's like nice. it, it's like a treat, and it it's got bubbles, so it fills me up, so I'm not eating as much. Like I had hard boiled eggs and a kiwi for dinner. So you really, know, where, yeah. My five my guys. manifestation is uh, <laughs> I had five guys <laughs> and a milkshake and a, I, I really did I, I ran around the city all day today and I was I was like I'm gonna get a five guys burger. You got the metabolism for it. That's, true. That's <clears throat> true. dude. I you've never been fat, man. I had I'm like <laughs> I have I'm scarred for life after being oh basic basically you know obese. What, though? You know? That that overcoming fatness is probably one of the most difficult tasks, and if you can do it, it's it sure. probably has to feel so fucking good. It sure does, and it's been four years of consistency. And I mean, there's waves of you know, like I got to a part where I was like, oh my god, I look good, and then you you kind of settle. But now yeah. I'm in. I went through a breakup four months ago, so I've been in like channeling pain into going to the yeah, gym yeah. and doing cold plunge and sauna and just like oh dude, going, I do that going to bed the early. All it's the best cold plunge. It's oh, dude, we, shit. We have the, a thing out here called the Russian and Turkish bathhouse. Nice. And the fucking thing is about this thing, man. All these writers came out here down on the streets. A lot of people come out in New York. I'm like, listen, guys, you got to go to this place with me. It'll change your life. And it's like sauna rooms and they have a cold plunge. And I, I have a membership there. I go there probably twice or three times a week. It's amazing. Dude, it's the best thing in the world. I can't. It's like a drug. Yeah, it really is. Like, you get out of that fucking cold plunge. You go right back in the hot room. It's like, whoa. 
that. Yeah. If, I feel like, like tingly. If, if you're in a bad mood and you go do hot and cold like contrast therapy, it's yeah. I did I did it two hours ago. I'm like I'm perked up. I'm ready to go. You know. Where do you fantastic. go to do it at out there? So I joined this gym called F45, which is like apparently worldwide. It's like I don't know. It's a 45 minute workout that's functional training. It alternates between like strength training and cardio days, whatever. It's a bunch of moms in there, and it's hard. It's like accountability wise. Like, are they good looking? Mm, no, but I look around. <laughs> I look around, and all these moms are like pushing through this workout, and I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it. And it push. Nice. I've been pushing myself harder than ever. But right next door, there's a place that has compression therapy, like the the. It's called Normatec, little like sleeves you put on your legs, yeah, yeah. and it flushes the blood around. Then you go in the sauna and then you hop from the sauna, you rinse off and you go in the cold plunge for as long as you can go in the hot tub and then back oh, wow. to the cold plunge. And then you're out. And How long just, are you doing the cold plunge for? How long can you be in there? I've my record. I was with Westcott in California and we went to a place just to do a drop in and I did five minutes without even thinking about it. And I was like, Bro, Damn, yeah, that's it's, crazy. I've yeah. only done a minute and a half. Yeah. So usually it's a minute and a half. Like today it was two, two sets of a minute and a half. And it's easier the second time, but yeah, that's impressive. Man. Really if you get in the zone, because it's like all about breathing. Like if you start, yeah. if you jump in there, your automatic nervous system is like, huh, 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 and then you freak <laughs> out, you panic, and you gotta leave. But like if you like, you know, get zen, put yourself focused on your breath, like it, and you're it, going up it's to your magical. Neck. Yeah, you're like this. I keep I, my hands I, out. I, I like keep this. my hands out too. If I want to go hard, I'm like this. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> well, it gets, I get worried that the chemicals from the the pool are gonna. So I kind of hold my nose. Nice. I get scared that I'm breathing in chlorine, but but you got to yeah, use your nose to breathe. That's funny. Um. So yeah, I, I've lost weight. I feel good. My goal is to look like a friggin' statue in like I don't know seven months. So like oh, the muscles under it, there. Man. I just gotta you know get rid of the fat. Yeah. So that's been you keeping me it? busy. Let's go back to uh, you win street series, and then what? You're good at this, Bobby. <laughs> You're good at doing this kind of conversation. I enjoy it. So um, street series, man. Yeah, I won street series, went back and worked at Navient, saved up some bread, and then was like, fuck it, I'm going back to California, and I'm going to do this. And I did. I went back to California, lived at the Cement Face house. And um, Who all lived at the Cement Face house? Oh, dude, that was such a crazy house, bro. Uh, Evan Fisher, yeah. who was a recluse. Legend. Who, legend uh, Midwest. It was all kind of Midwest cats, too, which was really cool to kind yeah. of go from the Midwest and go to California. And Long Beach was like a mecca for BMX. Yep. Um, so I moved to LB. Got it. I got to stay with those guys. Um, I slept. Dude, it's so crazy. I slept in Morgan Long's old room. Sometimes I'd sleep on the couch, but Morgan Long was never there. He stayed at his girlfriend's crib, and I think they're married now or something. But, um, you know, people would come in and out of that house. Yeah. Uh, at one point, Hobie was living there, Hobie Doan. That's when I first met him. Sick. And he slept right next to me on this bed. He had a cot. I was on the ground, so it was like this. Yeah. And then when Hobie dipped, Dan Crook came through. He was up there. I was down here. Is that when Dan Crook first moved to Cali too? I think so. Yeah, that's when he first got there. Yeah, that's the the BMX like. Uh, that was the original template. Template. That you was, move out yeah. to California and yep. chase the dream. Yeah. But uh, and then there was a couple other dudes there that um, uh, Josh Delcor, who was a BMX guy, and then another dude, Cody. Uh, his name was Cody, and then it was Morgan Long. I don't know what happened to Delcor, or Cody. I know Cody was heavy into the booze, but um, yeah, that's where I, I just went there, bro, and just really just started to immerse myself into the BMX scene. I got close with Adam Twenty Two and Vegan out there in the OSS dudes for a bit. Nice. And uh, <clears throat> you, you said know, just, you said I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna do this. What did you mean by this? Like, what did I'm you have in your head? Writer. I'm gonna be a pro rider. Nice. All that right. was it. Like that was nothing's gonna detour me away. Even even in Arizona though, bro, when I lived out there and you were there, it was like. That was the goal. I think that was always the goal, dude. Yeah. Everywhere I went, it had to be. Dude, you I'm were practicing so ride. hard. It was very noticeable. Like it, even on the flat ledge in front of my house, you would pedal over from wherever you lived and I, yeah. you, you'd be sessioning. You guys wouldn't even be there. And, yeah, just practice, you know? It's pretty crazy. You're dedicated as fuck. Whatever you yeah, do, man, you do 100%. I'll tell you that. Yeah, thank you, baby. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, man, I just went to Long Beach and became a Long Beach local for about two years. That was that. And then um yeah just i worked at a juice shop out there uh that everyone went to that's better than debt uh, collecting yeah kicked it with jeff z met all those guys rode cherry um got my first photo actually my first photo in ride was actually scott marceau who shot the wall ride at the arizona house 
at the Arizona that, house. I wish, I mean, I, I don't know if you have a time limit on this, but I could grab the photo up here. It's in this book. Do it. Yeah. All right. Give me a second here. Arizona house. Wall red at the Arizona house. Oh yeah, bro. Here they are. At the Arizona Look apartment how thin complex. Ride was. Look At how the thin Arizona ride was. apartment complex. Yeah, the one that Lashawn and I lived at. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember one hundred percent. Maddie. Uh, Matt. Oh, this is the wrong one. Maddie Nothnagel did like a feeble or Smith peg. double peg. Yeah, which is wild. And you wall rode from the top roof to the other roof and then made the drop. Drew Hosselton. Yes, yeah, Drew. Dude, he I miss in that Alaska man. Now, I man. know. Just, I grabbed the wrong one actually. This is the one. This is my first photo by Z. He shot this. This is the wall ride oh, through the tree, yeah. the 180. And yep. guess who wrote this? Uh, not this one. The one I was going to show you, Sean Burns actually wrote, uh, my favorite writer. He wrote the caption for it. Damn. It's Dreams up there somewhere. True. Yeah, man. It, yeah, it's up there somewhere, but. We'll put it in here. It, yeah. Deserves to be in here. You. Yeah. First photo in a magazine. Oh. I don't think I've ever gotten a photo in a magazine. I Bump. did the clip first. You, did you, wait, you did the clip first and then you went back for a photo? I did the clip first. And then Scott Marceau came through and I said, he's like, you did that. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, go put a red shirt on and go do it again. So I put a red shirt on and did it again. <laughs> nice. Because do you know who that, that clip has never seen the light of day? Who filmed it? Maloof for 1235. Ah, uh, shit. Well, it will see the light of day someday. I don't think it will, dude. I hope, <laughs> I hope Maloof listens to this. I have much love in my heart for him. Yeah. But he has, he is holding some of the gnarliest shit I've ever done on a bike. Yeah. In that hard drive. And I, it's been like eight. Uh, it's years. been a long time yeah like yeah. i was talking to matt miller about chocolate truck too and that video took nine years so you know was maybe it'll happen i think it's I just so, it's man. just a matter of like getting that you that know push. whatever it is getting out of the funk and getting into the like all right fuck it let's do it you know i mean dude he's, he has some good clips in there man yeah um, and i'm excited to see joey mata and reed stark and joey mata he got married gang. right yeah yeah He's married. <laughs> I love Joey Mata, man. He yeah. was such a fun dude. A hell of a human. Yeah. What a you, you could you should do one with him, man. I know. If he would I don't I don't think he'd be down, but someday. Yeah, he's what a legendary dude. I remember I remember I I'm not sure how, how you have this structure, but remember uh, Texas Toast when he he got he got he got his oh, yes. for our yes, own stupidity. Dude. For our fucking <laughs> for our stupidity. We left him in the van. With right? weed on his, we left him with in the van. We said he's gonna be fine, and he had weed sitting on him. <laughs> Fuck, I do remember this. And he got locked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he gives us a call. Yeah, Joey's in jail, man. We gotta wait. Fuck, I forgot that too. You just reminded my memory of that. That's amazing. But oh, now it's like all that. coming back. I don't back. know if you have a Texas toast trip on your little notepad there, but you should, we'll save that conversation. All right. Texas well, toast as a whole. That's when we lived yeah. in Arizona, by the way. Yeah. I remember going to Texas Toast for it was like my first time filming Sabrosa, but I don't, I can't remember if I've gone twice or not. But that trip was a blur. Either I way, got pink eye in your van. <laughs> Sick. I wonder you how. Know, I, I slept on your. I slept on the floor on the way back. Uh, yeah. nope. Everyone was pissed at me because I ran out of money. I had no money for gas. That sounds fun, but that I, that happens. I, sp I spent it all on drugs and alcohol at Texas Toast. <laughs> bmx life you know yeah dude stupidity but um but yeah dude so california was was a that's how it all happened and then i got hit with that um i got an agent tom barrow yeah. tom 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 v tommy v yeah who's he, having a child i can't i'm excited for him he's having a child with uh with jasmine hell yeah um he introduced me to this agent and then got me got me uh got me a casting my first ever casting was a timberland job and they they booked me, bro. Twenty grand. You had to get a passport in one day. Is that what uh, I heard? How, how did you know that? The, so you did a sit down and catch up with Maloof uh, for Fit in like 2017 or something, and I just oh wow, the Fit caught up. Yeah, I just yeah, Fit get caught up with Austin Augie. That was really well done, and that you told that story as well. Yeah, it took me. I got it done in a day. I had to borrow four hundred dollars from my friend. I want to get my passport. It's expired, and I don't. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I should just have it. How'd you get it done yeah, in a day, dude? Um, 
there's always ways. I, I was, like I said, bro, I'm determined. And I, I found out that I got the job. I booked a, uh, I booked a, um, an appointment through like this agency and stood in line at like eight in the morning. They, they like, okay, what do you need this for? And I told them and they, I had it by the end of the day. Amazing. Fle- flew out to Mexico city. Dude, imagine, you know me, I, I was dead broke, bro. Like I'm talking $0 to my bank account. I'm flying to Mexico city. First time yeah. ever traveling out of the country. First class. <laughs> Hell yeah. I get on a plane ride. I'm like, what is this? They're like, yeah, sir. You're in the front bro. Get mind you. I look like a BMX rider from long beach. Yeah. I'm like trashed up. I probably hung over cause we celebrated the night before. I remember that we celebrated. Yeah. And I was hung over and I was like, fuck it, dude, this is it. 20 grand. That's what's up. I actually I, made only 12. Did they give but, you like a haircut? Yeah, like, yeah. In Mexico city? Yeah. It, it was a whole yeah. ordeal. I'm picturing you looking like super grunge on the first class and then they get you in there and then they're like, Oh no, 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 this will not do. <laughs> and then I, and then I flew back first class with this girl named Tyre, Ty, Tyrell Rudolph, gorgeous model. And we both sat first class and that was kind of the start of it. I still know the, 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 the stylist from that shoots kind of gets me jobs out here in New York. Deb Watson. Really love her. Yeah. Is this uh, so you have an agent right now as well, yeah. right? I have a so, whole, crew of agents now man. nice thing. um it's not the same agent as that first one no 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 they um no no way I'm with so that. this that must have opened your eyes of like holy shit i can make real money doing you know, doing this you know uh yeah well i did make real money for a bit. yeah and then you for changed your life time. you took that 20 grand or 25 grand whatever you said and well i, I so, well it was 20 grand and then the agency kind of fucked me and took 12 grand and then taxes and so it ends well, up they actually they actually lower. got the check and it was six grand and i was like what is this they go oh we fucked up your taxes you'll get it on your turn i go no 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 it's fix this now and they yeah. sent me actually an extra six i remember that okay, Began nice. took me to the bank nice. Brandon Began took me to the bank to get the rest of my money did you just pull it all out in cash and kiss it <laughs> yeah, i put it in there but i got a debit card I had a, had a boy <laughs> finally off EBT. Were you on EBT when you were out there? Uh, I couldn't get EBT. I didn't because I wasn't you had a job. with taxes. Yeah. And I also wasn't paying taxes and they knew it. Oh yeah. Been there. <laughs> okay. Hey. And I know oh, that man, you bought really... your camera there. You bought, so like mm. you take the, that first gig and you invested in yourself. You like yeah, bought I, camera, I bought you up and left to New York. What'd you buy? I bought a Canon, I bought a Canon T3i. Good choice. That was my first HD yeah. camera. And, um, dude, this is, I never told this, this part of the story really. Cause it's, I always felt kind of dark that people would know the side of me, but I was at bar black and in, in Hollywood. And I remember, I remember Adam 22 showed me Casey Neistat, you know, Casey yeah. Neistat daily vlogger. And he goes, check this dude out. He makes a video every day. And I'm like, bro, I can, my life is interesting. I'll, I'll make, and I was super coked up at bar black, just sitting in the corner, kind of just sad. Like, man, what am I doing? I have this money. I got to do something. And, I just had this idea. I was like, I'm going to film every single day. And I, I did. I started filming every single day that next morning. It and started remember, in Long Beach? Yeah, it started at the Cement Face house. Cool. Um, I remember Morgan Long and then we're like, they were filming me. I was like, I'm doing push-ups and sit-ups. Like, Why are you filming yourself? I'm like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest, for, for a while. I'm going to do this. Sick. I, I, feel my, I filmed myself breaking up with my girlfriend at the time that Dan Damn. Kirk filmed it. It was really intrusive. And I, you know, at that time I was super young and, and not very, um, you know, thoughtful of other people's feelings, but yeah, I, I filmed my breakup with her and Dan that's Coke a bold it. move. Yeah. That's why, but, but it wasn't like in my head, it was like, this is, this is my art. It's, it's part of life. Now. Yeah. This is my life. I'm going to share this. And, um, I never put her name out there. No one saw her face ever, but yeah, he, he filmed it from the top of the stairs. Yeah. And you just hear her go, are you for real Austin? I'm like, yeah, I got to go to New York. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's a heavy life moment that makes for good, you know, yeah. entertainment yeah, people T3i. love living vicariously how did the so you, you up and left to new york and then you started went, doing these daily vlogs with, do you remember nick jones yeah hell yeah i remember nick, nick jones. jones he worked for the come up yep bro i have my tentacles in all parts of dmx it's pretty funny that i'm talking about this i'm like thinking about all these people that were dmx is such a beautiful um a beautiful group because you do you have like you have a, a group of people all around the world that you can kind of lean on it's magical it's crazy yeah. same probably for skateboarding too but um yeah nick jones um let me stay at his his apartment in the back room i slept on this little six by six mattress it was so uncomfortable and all these videos are online you can see this whole journey yeah um but i slept in the back of his uh, <clears throat> his apartment 
um, for like a month or two months and then he moved out and I moved into his one little bedroom with no window um, in Bushwick, Brooklyn. And that was my start of my New York uh, career. What was it like at the beginning of doing the vlogs? Were you getting good feedback or hate or? I mean, dude, I got hate my whole, I think just my personality kind of brings that out of people. They kind of just feel like, I don't know, either they're intimidated by my kind of outgoingness or my zany kind of attitude that I have or, um, and then YouTube came along. And I think a lot of people misconstrue like um, not, uh, motivation and, and kind of like a dream with like narcissism and, and trying to be like a, a famous person yeah. and at first I was I was like I'm gonna be famous I'm gonna be famous from this that's what I wanted to do I was like I want people are gonna know me and um and that's what that's what kind of was the downfall of my YouTube career to be honest at one point was that I was then making content for the wrong reasons but at first dude it was so I don't know man I would wake up in the morning go get my coffee I remember listening to Drake's new album in my headphones it was just like this I have these vivid memories of just being really stress-free. Like my life wasn't, I wasn't stressed out. Like nice. my life was so just wake up, do you ride your bike, you know, everything's going to be good. And that's yeah. what it really was for that long time. So I didn't really pay attention to the hate until about a year, uh, six months, seven months into it. Okay. Is when the hate started to kind of, kind of really get into my head a little bit, but what, I mean, cause you're at, you know, six, almost 600,000 subscribers now, like in within the first year, did you get, a big yeah like was it like or yeah. what how well, I had fast? a couple i had a couple viral it was the first year first nice year i got i got up to about five hundred thousand people then i slowed down um but i had a couple viral videos that went viral like the construction okay. worker video yeah some of the thailand video trips and stuff like that the but bmx death gap i got a tattoo in bangkok you know oh like, the buddhist monk tattoo yeah yeah uh, that one got that one went that one blew up on facebook man interesting um, yeah, dude, it was, that was kind of like, that was such a cool time too. I went to Thailand, lost my money, had to come back a little early. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Shit. I, so, I, could t I would tell you the, the story of how I lost some money, but I can't tell that on here. It was, <laughs> we'll talk after. Of, talk after. So you're living at Nick Jones for the first while. Like what was your first job in, uh, were you just living off the savings from your Yep, your I never had a job. Never had a job. I, I haven't had a job in New York for eight years or so. What about BMX delivery? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, I guess, I, uh, I guess you could say that was definitely a job, the Postmates. Okay. Um, so it was a little hustle, but it was also like, it was also uh, content. So like the de deliveries themselves were content with, within the YouTube. So I was bringing about $3,000 in a month from YouTube and then, that's um, dope. and then I'd bring in a little bit, you know, four or $500 from the Postmates. That's great, man. Yeah. And then you gotta okay. be careful about I'm interested in the monetization of YouTube because my boss is uh, he's reached 20K now and we do yeah. daily uploads and it's about five grand a month. And he's it's getting like, five grand a month. It's because he's in the real estate world. And so what's his view count on those? Not not that high, like low, you know, maybe like a, mine, a couple like mine with, right now, a couple with 60K and then average of about, you know, 700. Like it's 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 weird. And I'm like, I was blown away by He's the numbers. He's getting 5k a month? Yeah. And I, I don't know. Sorry, Jamil, what? if you're listening. No, but bro. That's I think it's because dude. it's in the real estate world and they value his audience higher because they're looking yeah. to buy products like, you know, coaching courses or advertising to people who are interested in real estate is probably more valuable than advertising to people who are interested in BMX, yeah. which is, I was, I was blown away when I saw that because, you know, it's just the beginning for him on YouTube as well, which is sick. And I'm yeah, happy I'm, to be uh, a part of it. Yeah, I love what you got. It's funny, man. I don't, I'm not big in the real estate shit. I know Sauce the Boss is doing it and I really enjoy it. It's really cool to see his transition too into it. And uh, yeah. I'm just now starting to do daily again. Yep. I'm, back, I'm back up to about $900 a month. Nice. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that in the next like two to three months, I can get back up to the five grand mark because that would really change my life again. That was, that was the peak, huh? Uh, the peak for me was I was making about 10 K a month from YouTube. Sick. Yeah. That was, that was for three months there. That was after the Buddhist temple video. And then the, the construction worker video brought me in uh nine K. Hell yeah. That yeah, was cool. <laughs> That's dude. Wild. Was, yeah. And I went and took that nine K and bought a ticket to Thailand. I went to Thailand. Um, Good for you. I want to go to Thailand. That's dope. Dude, I'm going back, bro. I'm going back with my photo cameras and not going to make a book about it. That's sick. Point. Yeah. We're in New York, we're monetizing our YouTube, and then you reach a breaking point, I remember. I, 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 I don't know if it was a breaking point, but you kind of, what was the, well, tell me about that moment. 
if there was, was one moment. moment. Well, I also went through a breakup with my girlfriend at the time, the first girl I ever loved. Um, which I don't, you know, it's funny to say that out loud. You know, love is a crazy one that'll fuck your head up a little bit. Yeah. And I remember being in Barcelona, and this was a big pivotal moment for me too. I was with Donna Key, I was with Joris, I was with Anthony Perrin. I was living in this Barcelona house for two weeks and I couldn't even go out and ride my bike. I was so depressed. I couldn't make videos. I yeah. was just depressed, dude. And I just remember it was like, dude, this is like what you've been wanting forever. Like you're with these, the best writers in the world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then there was like comments and like hate that I was getting. And I remember just being on the floor of my apartment when I got back from Barcelona and just like chugging wine. I remember drinking like two bottles of wine and I turned the camera on and no one ever saw this video, but yeah. Uh, made a, made a like, drunken cam you know, I was like, is this video. what you guys want to see it's the real me you know <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that's a low point that's yeah, a low that was point. low bro but um and also like i was doing more modeling stuff i thought i was going to be a big model it's yeah. just it's just it's just life bro kind of like your, your head starts to go in all these different directions and you i got an ego i started thinking i was like bro i'm too good for youtube now i'm making you know i made 50 grand in uh two months one time from my yeah. course and I was like, bro, this is what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. I'm gonna have money forever. Yeah. Um, and no one tells you that you should save all that at the beginning of his modeling career because those are very few and far between. Yeah. And uh, once I started like making big modeling money and started partying more, partying a lot more in New York. I mean, dude, I was partying so heavy. I uh, that was the breaking point, man. I just kind of stopped doing YouTube and uh, turned my back on the audience, thinking that I wasn't like I wasn't good enough or something, but. Yeah, that's that's what happened, man. But that's all you know. That's life, bro. It's nothing to be. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm just like, bro. That's like a learning point that's for me and part of the journey. I lived hard. I lived real hard. Lived real fun. Lived fast. Yeah. I lived real fast. I what was the wrinkles? I can Yeah, I can. I can relate to being depressed and not wanting to do anything. And that low moment of like just being drunk and doing the spiteful filming to like. I didn't do it on a YouTube video that I never released. I did it on an Instagram story that I deleted the next morning because I was depressed. I was living with uh, Eric and Giselle and Chandler, fattest I've ever been, just kind of washed up. Lightworks is like, yeah. a, you know, a quarter of the way finished and I'm just drunk and hating on myself and fuck you. Just like, I remember an Instagram story that I still cringe just thinking about like, it's just low points are low points, man. Well, dude, that's that's just where we're at in the world. Like we have these platforms that we can, you know, we can go and share these these points with, but you know, then you have to live with that sharing moment. Yeah. And that's what can really eat you away too, is that you know, if you do share, then you start to, and this was another thing for me, is that when I did start sharing a shit ton, I started like what what do people think of me? Like, what do people think of me? And then, you know, remember the dig stuff with that fat head dude? Uh yeah. Fat head yeah, like they, talking yeah. to the camera. Well, he would or like, just... he would do, he would do those no donuts. Yeah. And like, I don't want to give him any shine time. I think he's a real kook, but, um, he really broke me down for a bit, dude. I just thought I was like, man, I'm, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice dude. I don't want to have people hate me because I'm sharing BMX in a different way. Yeah. But these things really started, I would go to contests and people would like, I remember being at the source contest one time and trying to hang her up the rail with Garrett Reynolds. And I was super stoked. And then there was this couple other dudes to the right that were just like, it was almost like bullies back in high school again. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just was getting so angry that I just wanted to kill these dudes. I really was like, I will fucking kill you guys right now. I'm so mad at you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming BMX or nothing. I just, yeah, there was a time where they were really, the comments were getting to me. And I believe it. Yeah. That's, but it's easy, you know. Rogan says, don't, let don't check the comments and i'm like trying to keep that in mind as this podcast Dude, goes i'm Bobby, just gonna ignore the comments I can tell you one thing <laughs> i check the comments now on my youtube because what i'm doing now is I have, a, I have a beautiful community of people who follow me on youtube now through this thing i'm trying to do with sobriety and stuff so now i check it because it's a kind of a beautiful conversation and i'm not going out and like forcing content it's very much like a real um story that i'm trying to share yeah so now it's a little bit easier and i've learned from the past but if I could tell you what, I mean, you, you can check the comments, bro. You're not doing nothing that's going to really rattle anybody's change. You're just talking and yeah. having a conversation. So. It's just inevitable. I mean, yeah. that's with, with growth comes, comes those haters. That means you're doing something right, though. I, I've always, like, a, I remember, like, the period of time where Austin Augie is just Austin Vloggy, you know, and everybody's, yeah. you know, like, dismissing you. And I still 
maintain like a little like i respected the hustle dude like you came i remember i was just proud of you in a way and you know that it sucks because that comes that comes with it you know what what you were doing was cool and you were making a living off of youtube and bmx like you literally chased your dream and you know achieved it yeah and it's it's dude, i don't yeah. think people realize how hard it is too and i'm still doing it now i'm back on the daily video stuff it's so and, hard <laughs> and i'm doing it i'm also doing it not only to kind of help bring up my income and, and not have to go get a nine to five but it's yeah. also like it's a structure and it's also a routine that is so powerful if you can keep this up i feel like i can do anything if i can wake up and make a video go out film another one without yeah. fucking up my life a little bit and being too intrusive and sharing oversharing. yeah but dude, it is hard to make a video every day. I would sure like to is. see those dudes who talk shit do that. I tried it for 13 days. I did a vlog for 13 days. And oh, I remember watching those actually. Yeah, I remember you yeah, commented, dude. keep going. And it was exhausting. And I was, <laughs> it was like killing the vibe of wherever I was. And I didn't, <laughs> it was so much work, especially to edit it well, like a Casey Neistat style, you know, like and yeah. put flair onto it. It's like, I'm, you're talking four or five hours at night of editing your day. And it's okay. just like, and then you wake up and try and repeat it. I was like, I, I do up. it in the morning. Nice. The editing. It takes me two hours. It talks me two hours to do a good solid edit that I'm proud of. Nice yeah. for, you know, a 10 they're, minute ish video. And they're good, man. I mean, for what yeah. they are, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I just filmed a movie with my friend, Aaron, like a real quality, uh, short film that we're submitting to Sundance and these movies. So I'm doing real stuff. So I tell myself that the vlog stuff is just for me to kind of have a community and, um, to be able to be creative and share a little bit more that's dope that's what you that's what you got to do now if you want to be an artist by the way like we it's live just, in a time period where you can't just expect word of mouth to be able to get you someplace like yeah. you have to really be a hustler to make it as a photographer if you want to be a photographer yeah you know? speaking of that tell me about your patreon when did that oh, start oh you got the patreon did yeah. you join <laughs> i haven't joined yet <laughs> but okay. tell me about it <laughs> Dude, it's really cool man um <laughs> you did some research huh a little bit yeah um yeah dude so it's uh again it's all from my youtube channel i i i i I just said hey i started the patreon and eventually it's going to turn into something bigger and i want to i want to be able to start um i hope to get up to a thousand patreon members and if i get to a thousand that's about five grand a month Mm -hmm. and uh i call the patreon members producers and eventually i'll be able to go and start um, sharing stories that aren't necessarily about me it's my journey to these places but I'll be able to start really doing some photojournalism stuff that I want to do within my channel. Sick. And, um, you know, I, I wanted, I wanted to go to Mississippi last week. They have a water crisis going on right now. And I wanted to document that and take photos of kind of like how people are affected. And, um, Pakistan right now has those crazy floods. And Why if haven't I, had I heard many, of either of these things? Oh, dude, they're yeah. Pakistan really, really got fucked up by some floods. Damn. Um, but I wanted to go and cover that, but I can't afford to go right now. But eventually the Patreon, hopefully will get to the point where I'll go and cover these events, share them in a non-biased way and just show people real life situations that how people are affected and then um, make these little zines and newspapers and stuff to give back to the Patreon members. And Artful, just, dude, Patreon artful such, journalism. Yeah, but dude, it's such a crazy platform where, I mean, dude, these people just, sub, I get two or three a day now. That's and great. The, in the in the uh, in the community and the people like when they told them I wanted to go sober like the comments and the messages that people were giving me it was so inspiring they're like dude I went through this like here you go man just thank you, you got this yeah I had like dude I have an inbox on my Instagram I'm just I can't even read all the messages people saying thank you for bringing the videos back you have no idea what you've done for me and um it's kind of surreal yeah but the Patreon is is literally just my fans supporting me like they have no idea like i get 500 bucks now a month from them that's great and on top of the you know um my fit check and this check it's been it's like dude it's like an actual like you're actually supporting me this is really wild so. that's so good and yeah, it's only dude. gonna grow man especially keeping up the, this new daily thing it's like yeah a, you know you went you don't through... find them cringy at all do you no if you went through cringy. dude i'm over the thinking the shit is cringy like even your old vlogs, I don't think is cringe. Like, fuck that. that I, I really don't like that mindset of like, you know, there's a clip of, there's a clip. Yeah. Self-deprecating is not cool anymore. You know, like it used to be, and then you get stuck in that mindset of like, ew, so cringe. I would never do that. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. Like ASAP Rocky has a clip where he's like, you're going to hate on somebody for trying, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, 
exactly so i don't do the th do whatever you want to do and i'm supporting it there's no no such that, thing as cringe i appreciate that that cringe is a like a projection of insecurity you know yeah i agree it's, man i agree it's like i'm a, i'm a cool artist i would never do anything like that it's like get over oh, yourself dude, that, you know? that was yeah. my whole that was whole, my whole thing of coming back to youtube i was like what are uh fashion people we're going to think if I want to be a photographer and shoot these things, am I not going to be able to get these jobs because I'm doing YouTube? Like my whole mind, you know, it just starts to fuck with you. It's like, what are people going to start thinking of me? Am I going to be able to get these jobs? And yeah. what is dig or what is will? And those guys going to think of me, are they going to still want me to shoot for BMX for them? If they think I'm doing vlogs now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's where my, that's where my mind goes. It's like yeah. super self-destructive. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know, I, I've, I've grown older and gotten better at uh, navigating those thoughts. And it's like constant. It's never like, it's not like I, you know, am fully confident like that all the time, but yeah. you know, as long as you're aware of it and you can like bring yourself back to it when you're having those thoughts, it's just like, you know, just remember it's all good. You know, it's yeah, kinda, everything's fine. Man. Yeah. It's wild. There's nothing to really worry about dude. Really? Cause like, yeah. honestly, one day you're just going to die. Yeah, for real. <laughs> like, like one day you're dead. So fucking figure <laughs> out what you want to do. Just saw a clip on Instagram of this girl talking about that and like, does it, the, you know, it says, does it really matter? And then it zooms out and then you see earth and then it zooms out more and then yeah, you see yeah. the galaxies and all that. And it's just like, yeah, we are pretty, we're just One specks good of thing dust that and, social media yeah. is for is for inspirational quotes. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I hate social media. To, uh, pretty, pretty, I, I'm not a big fan of social media, especially for like what it does to your mental health, but um, there are some inspirational things you can see on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it's interesting to just to go back to the the vlog and Casey Neistat being an influence because I could see that, you know, just yeah, just yeah. in the Thailand one, you know, opening the closet door for the intro and then, you know, closing that, doing quick cuts well, of the, the B-roll of the light much, switch and shit. I was very much just copied him directly, really. Yeah. But um, then that's how you develop your own style. You copy until you get your own shit. And then I feel like maybe you've come I mean, into your style, own. Like, his style came from Tom Sachs. Yeah. It's so, nobody's I mean, original. It's all. Mm -mm great artist copy whatever that phrase is you know and then you and then you you progress into your own your own uh kind of entity yeah, so, yeah you take take something that's already been done but make put your little flavor on it and that applies to bmx tricks as well you know agreed like very much agreed yeah shit <sighs> let's look at our notes yeah. here yeah bring it on baby bring the notes well let's i mean down of the streets just happened and seeing you at the end of that and your voice is all gone that was so fucking cool like putting oh putting dude, that i shit fucked together. up at the end of that though i fucked up at the end of that why so brett silva was the fan, fan favorite brett silva is one of my fi favorite writers right now dude this dude is on another level he's on um, fire um brock Devin, and benny benny yeah. and then there was also casey who killed it there was a whole flu slew of people that killed it yeah but i already knew so the way that I judged it this year and the way that I already knew who's going to, you know, at the end of it, I knew who I wanted to win. And that was Brock being second because he was just on another level. Mm -hmm. um, Brett, he did the most barely shit and also wrote every spot. So he obviously won first and everyone told me, everyone agreed. But third place was really hard between Benny and Devin, right? But Benny, first time ever being in New York, riding with the pros, first time ever competing, and then just slaughtered everything uh, that they went too yeah so that was like the way that i kind of uh measured uh how how they won um but at, when i announced it i go at, you know at third place is benny and then second place it was really difficult between devin and brock and oh like, shit <laughs> I like, and i didn't mean for i meant to be yeah. brock and benny yeah um but yeah devin was super, <clears throat> super cool with it man I, I felt really bad afterwards but dude it was crazy this year a real life typo <laughs> yeah, I did a real life typo um but i don't know if i'm gonna do it next year or not we'll see um it's a lot you of work said that after every single one yeah and then halfway through the year your girlfriend says you're doing it again you know yeah so. exactly <laughs> that's great uh but it's just uh it was super cool this year man all the sunday guys came out and panza helped make the um, saturday's event really crazy built that crazy car sick um Andrew York from Mesereal Shop. I got to show him some 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 shine time there. Um, he really helped put Saturday's event together. Oh. Um, it was a really kind of coming together of, and it's also very important for me too to not step on anybody's toes out here in New York. Yeah. Like I made sure Joey uh, was the person who kind of helped me find the spots and not blowing Sick. up too many spots that are going to be um, kind of blowing them out of proportion and making sure that no one can come here and film on them again because they've already been destroyed. Right. Um, so he was, he was a big part of it. And, you know, I really love 
it's really cool to come to New York and have this community now. Like Joey from A and PM is like one of my closest homies out here. And no shit. Um, oh yeah. yeah, he's dude. Joey Piazza is one of the sickest dudes. Dude. Yeah, he's, he films. He, he's a fucking school teacher. No shit. He's That's a fucking dope. school. He speaks. He yeah. teaches special ed kids. Wow. Right? During the day. During yeah. the day, right by my house. So right at my crib. We'll have we'll have breakfast in the morning sometimes. And then he'll go. He'll call me and he'll go and ride till fucking two. One time we party till. Hopefully he doesn't get in trouble for this. One time we party till seven in the morning and then he went to school at eight <laughs> and fucking killed He's it. He's dedicated. <laughs> He's dedicated, man. He's a, such a cool dude. And uh, he was a big part of Donna Streets this year too. That's awesome. Who yeah, else man. Who else is like in the New York scene? Like, I mean, I mean dude, Tyrone, it's... I saw footage of him in that Sunday video. It's so cool to see because he's, yeah, some, he's somebody I've seen since I first started. You know, Can I Eat was my first taste. And... Same. Can I Eat was in my first videos. Yeah. It's but he, uh, he's still trying to run the shop. It's kind of difficult out here for him, man. And we did a we did a fundraiser for him last year, raised about 16 grand. And that was really cool. Um, That's got to help a lot. I wonder what yeah. the rent is on like a bike it's shop. It's pretty and... expensive down there, man. He's, yeah. he's, he's in Lower East Side. He's down there in like a really popping hipster gentrification area he's, yeah. he's between he's between a place called kiki's which is a uh, pop and white girl spot where they go and have their wine and take photos of their meal and then a place between and then forget me not which is like your kind of dive bar huh. um so it's like he's in like pop and hipster area yeah and you'll go and you'll you'll go into forget me not and have some drinks and you'll see to the left that roan's out there just blaring reggae music smoking spliffs you'll see the whole sidewalk right in the middle is like full of smoke and people <laughs> that are going to kiki's are just like Ugh, I'm disgusted and like walk around. <laughs> Fucking love Fuck it. You. <laughs> but um, what Ralph, is it like? Yeah, Ralph though is a. Oh yeah. About to cut you off, Ralph. Yeah. Uh, overdose, Ralph, killing it. Um, I mean, uh, Dev. These young kids out here. We got Marcus, who's on Fit. Dev the Great, Marcus Hoyt, right? Marcus Hoyt, who's the Tire yeah. King. Yeah. Um, I mean, dude, there's this kid named Steven. There's so many good kids out here, and uh, they just love riding. That's dope. Um, yeah, man. That's one of the hardest things, though, too, is that is that uh, just to stay motivated out here in New York and, and ride as much as you can, because those dudes do it. They ride every day almost. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, I think about this often because when I'm talking to this, these people and everybody's like still in it, like and living the actual BMX life. And yeah. I remember doing that, but I am not in that stage anymore. So it's like I, it's funny you say that, man. This is my little escape. And I I'm still chipping away at the sequel to mediocre at best. And, uh, it, I, just, yeah, I just can't put pressure on myself to do it. Like I, like I would, yeah. dude, it's funny. Sorry. James knew Rick. So after a Kramis episode, we're talking about Dan and Joe Cox and I'm like, where's Joe Cox? What is Joe Cox doing? And then James knew Rick from overseas sent me a DM with a link to an article or an interview with Joe Cox, like a recent one from this yeah. year. And I, he was talking about his days of making voices and tomorrow we work and then how his life is now. And I related to it so hard. He's like, well, except for the having kids part, but just so if I'm going to go ride, I have maybe a couple hours. And then by the time, like I'm out with the boys hanging out, I got to start thinking about getting home. You know, it's just yeah. like, it's a different well, it's going older. Well, he, he also, now he has kids. That thing just really starts to take off. It's on kind of its yeah. own little trail, you know, for real. Are you um, planning on uh, doing the reproduction thing anytime soon? Making some babies, what, some model babies. Well, with, with the, the way the world is, my girlfriend's really gorgeous. We'd probably make really beautiful babies. She's, I bet she's so she would. Gorgeous. She, she's so she and would, smart from what I've heard. Ones. Neuroscientist. Yeah, neuroscientist. Um, she just got. She just started Columbia today. Sick. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I get worried that I wouldn't be a good dad. I want to make sure that I don't do what my dad did to me when I was younger. I want to be a good dad, and I want to make sure I'm financially stable before I do any of that shit. Yeah, for sure. And, That's uh, smart. Um, you get there. Yeah, maybe one day. Uh, maybe when I'm, you know, who knows. You yeah. never know how the world kind of works. I don't really think about the child children thing, especially the way the world is at the moment. Yeah. It's such a weird scary wild place. times, dude. Yeah. It could be, yeah, I don't even we don't we don't need to get into that. I mean, hopefully <clears throat> stop, hopefully just a, a fucking meteor just comes and just resets us all. I don't mind if like the whole world just goes out <laughs> because we're just destroying this place. <laughs> Please give us apocalypse. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be on the you got to make one of those reels. Austin thinks it should be apocalypse. Uh Austin wants everybody to die. So that's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh let's see. What's your latest modeling gig? Have you done one uh, recently? Yeah, it's it's kind of hit or miss now, man. I think, you know, modeling is, um, I'm trying to be behind the lens more. And the more you're in front of the lens, the more, the less people take you serious as a photographer. Interesting. And I just, um, I'll do How it. How do you know my, that? 
I just feel like I, is that I one of those know, thoughts that we just talked about. Maybe it's one of those thoughts. Yeah. But I just don't want to be seen. I want to just, I want, I want to be a photographer and I want to be behind the lens more. So maybe it's just like my mindset saying, okay, I need to be behind the lens more, the, more so than in front. Um, but I also could be that I'm not getting as much jobs as I used to, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause as you get older, you know, you don't get booked as much. The new kids come in. There's always a new face. Yeah. It's a very toxic, toxic industry, to be honest, man. I believe it. Toxic. Yeah. You get a job and you don't get paid for three months, four months. I didn't get paid from a brand for 10 months one time. Damn. Um, this is no boy. And then, you know, they, the way sometimes your agents talk to you, it doesn't really seem like they actually care. Um, you know, they don't understand that this is like something that, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm a little jaded at the industry just cause I'm not making the bread that I used to make, but, yeah. uh, and I, I just, I work with rag and bone a lot. Yeah. Um, I read, uh, the interview of like how, how organic it felt shooting with them like just yeah, running good. around yeah robbie M robbie morales came to me at swamp fest and he goes man chase hawk came up to me and said he saw you in one of his favorite brands and that's rag and bone i was like chase hawk knows me <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> the next is the, the next big thing from austin texas knows me man i love <laughs> the, chase hawk dude that's the next big thing <laughs> remember that <laughs> and yeah. he would just do the busty he was so yep. sick still he sick was. still sick yeah he's he's got longevity it's pretty cool yeah. to see chase hawk like holding it down like from way back in the day like i remember when he was the ratty kid on road fools or i forget yep. which number it Prop, was but Props 15 yeah that one so Prop 15 with seth kimbrough yes uh eric holly who did the crank flip smith down the down the columbia rails in indiana yeah yep. that, that was my one of my first videos mm -hmm. I know I was kind of late to and the then game. Steve Crandall's just calling Chase Hawk ratty, or he's yeah. asking people how to describe Chase Hawk and yeah. ratty, 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 or whatever it was. He pushes and... Aaron Ross up the top of that ramp at a at the failure compound. Yep. Yeah, dude, I remember that shit very well. <laughs> but yeah, that like some people could get that level of notoriety and then just kind of like fall off. But Chase Hawk is still holding it down. I think. Yeah. I it's don't know him to... well enough to say that, but yeah, yeah. It feels it's like it's hard to stay. It's hard to stay. It's funny, man. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with that now with fit at the moment, man. I just had the conversation today about maybe uh, having to step down as a pro rider, which is really shitty. It's a sucky thing to say, but you know, you have Milky coming up, you have Marcus Hoyt coming up and they, they eat and breathe and they, they, they embody what BMX is and still is for me, but a little bit harder for me to kind of, to still do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I sometimes think maybe it is better for them to kind of take take the check because if they're willing to wake up in the morning and go film an Instagram clip um, to kind of promote the brand, maybe it's better for them to do that than maybe to give it to me. Yeah. Even though, dude, I still I still very much um, in writing. I'm still writing at a high level. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe not killing myself as I used to, you know, doing the biggest shit, but I still have a a, a good amount of writing in me. It's just it's hard to balance the work and writing life now, dude, especially in New York city. I believe it. Yeah. It's Priorities and man. like slowly, but surely the writing BMX thing kind of falls. But also you don't get paid well enough. Bro. You really don't get yeah. paid enough to live it. I'd be on food stamps right now if I was still living off a BMX check. Yeah. And I'm not talking shit on it. It's just kind it's, of how it the is what it is. is. Yeah. And yeah. if you're willing to, you know, I think Eddie said it best about denim. Yeah. Denim does it the best way. You yep. know what I mean? Um, work your ass off and then ride when you can or ride when you need to. And but he, I think he might be able to do that, but I can't even do that now. I can't go and ride my ass off for a week on a trip. I mean, we don't even go on trips anymore, to be honest. But um, if I was to go and like, I broke my elbow at the beginning of COVID and thank God I had uh, some money saved up. But if I break anything now, dude, I am so fucked. I got There's you. My dad just put me on this injury uh, accident insurance. That's 30 bucks a month. I'll, really? I'll, yeah. I'll link you up with my dad. Sounds like and, a scam. No, it's legit. It's, he's, he's been selling life insurance for health insurance forever. And it's a $30 thing and it covers accidents up to X amount of dollars. And really, I was, I was like, yeah, let's, and he's like, you should get your BMX buddies on this. And I, I will, was like, actually. I was like, maybe I can make a commission off of that. He's like, yeah, it would be $2. And I'm like, well, let's just, you know, I can spread okay. the word for, for the sake of you know getting, that, getting coverage. That that broken leg story uh that was a seventy five thousand dollar surgery hot damn never paid never paid for it <laughs> oh, didn't shit. affect my credit didn't affect my credit huh never paid for it yeah it's crazy good on you scamming the system fuck them yeah fuck the system, <laughs> man yeah fuck them um you brought up fit and things have been tumultuous there for a couple of years like i think i forget what interview it was but you were uh is that 
FTL podcast. Oh man, that one's still up there, huh? Yeah, and you were talking about Sauce the Boss being the TM of Fit, and yep. then my so my yeah, and then Maloof stepped down Dude. to be a pro rider, and then Sauce took and then over. Got <laughs> this is, see this it's hard it's it's going to be hard to have this conversation without pissing pissing off some people but i don't want to do that i have a lot of respect but you know you got to talk about it because that was such a weird fucking thing to do maloof was a top-notch tm you know minus the booze and some of his you know personal prop not to you know to put him under the bus but you know not to minus some of his problems that he dealt with but his videos that were going out on fit were top quality yeah He's bringing one of the in the best. views it had it had it had a, it had aesthetic it had a, it had storytelling capabilities when you watched it it wasn't just a bmx video you felt something when you watched it yeah and the videos shared that one thing i would say is that it's hard for maloof to maybe take criticism or have a boss telling him what to do yeah especially creatively i think it's always difficult as a, as a creator to have someone tell you how to be creative yeah um but I think sometimes you got to really bite the bullet with you're getting paid to travel the world and film bike riding. That was a really cool thing to be able to do. But yeah, that's also, a learning I think, curve. I think also sometimes people don't get the respect that they deserve. And that's another curve that people need to learn how to do is, is respect the work that goes into what they're doing. Yeah. And I think with the, with the, with the uh, kind of over, not the overturn, but the turnaround time for the content now, can really drain a creative and drain, drain an artist. It Dude, can really yeah. fuck you up. If you're, if you're making flogs, which yeah. is what he was doing and doing this and that, it can really start to really, if you're not strong enough in the mind to, to understand what, you know, whatever it is, it can really be a succubus and really fuck you up. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, um, then Benthian came in and Benthian made that fit all video. And then so they let him, they let him go for some reason. I, I don't know what, what the decision process with that is but you know it could be some jaded things from like you know the cult fit era things like that where they kind of feel like they can't trust anybody or something but they had so many good things going and um it's just a bummer that because when especially when maloof was going dude we were we went to we did the fuck it tour in uk yeah so sick, yeah man that it was, was like the highlights of my life man and yeah he, you know, we did the Canada tour. He, we had such a good team, team vibe. And, um, you know, maybe there's some things behind the scenes that I don't know about, but it's a good chapter. I wonder though, like from the perspective of a BMX company, it makes me wonder like how valuable is having a in-house on salary videographer, like at, at this know. point in time where everybody's their own content Instagram. machine. Like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's maybe what, and I've talked to, talked to them about it before. And maybe that's what it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not talking shit on them. This is just kind of a, uh, open conversation where I'm just thinking, but yeah, maybe it's just not lucrative enough to, for that to happen. Yeah. You know, know for, BMX money's tight. This recession is happening and yeah. like COVID on top of, the, of that, dude, like phew. what happened during that too, as I learned is a lot of these companies, uh, during COVID, they didn't have any stock. So they sold out all of their bikes during COVID BMX sales were out of the roof. Everyone's having a great, great year. But, but then, then after the ships that, got stuck, the ships you know? got stuck. Yeah. And then they had overstock and then now no one's buying bikes. So, you know, it's a very, it's BMX companies, you know, I don't know nothing about it, but I imagine it's a very like tipsy turvy hard thing to really nail down. It's not a very, it's not an industry where you can be like, oh, this is what it's going to be like. You know, I don't I mean? envy it. I don't envy owning no. a, like a, you know, Sparky's and, like Ronnie's done a great job. Robbie, oh yeah. Chris, Moller's like been doing it. Every, all those, of them, they've been doing it for the years, pivotal bro. ones, you know, but it's just like, I, <laughs> that's a lot of stress and trying to make money out yeah. of this in a core no. way too, like without, you know, yeah. like becoming a, I don't know, not to eat. Well, there was a lot of, there was a lot of things too, that maybe fit dude. And I, I, I've told him this, like given the, you know, they, they kind of get on me a little bit for not promoting as much as I should. And I, I, I get it and I should, um, but I don't really have any, I don't have a, a pro model bike anymore. I don't have any, any, I don't have anything with my name on it anymore. And that's what I wanted to be was a pro rider. And yeah. you know, what do I have to promote anymore? Yeah. And again, I hope they don't watch this and be like, man, I'll get fucking, but no, you're just being real. This is like what I, if, if you want a pro rider to be a pro rider, you got to give them something to want to be a pro rider for. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe if, uh, if that's something that can't be given, then maybe it's just time for me to not be the writer that I thought I could be and uh, give it to some kids that are willing to just throw their life on Instagram, you know? Yeah. Because we kind of came up in the era where that wasn't really what you should do. But, it's interesting, right? The, the yeah. transition from like 
oh, you're posting your clips on Instagram, weirdo. Dude. To now, it's like how funny is that, yeah. bro? I remember, I remember, the, like all those guys used to talk shit. All the yeah. heavy pros. Yeah. Like, oh, look at you guys you putting shit on your Instagram. Yeah. But now there's a balance. Like I know that all the pros, like Dakota, yeah. for example, is like going off like. They'll be filming a real clip around the corner, but then that goes around, sets his tripod up, and films a you yeah, know Instagram he did it the clip. Right way. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. There's a balance to it, and yeah, even when we go out filming, like there's always like okay, let's bring the real camera out for this one, and then I'll bust out the cell phone for this one, you know? And yeah, it's, yeah, hundred percent. It's part of the game, and you got it. It's a game of eyeballs, and Nick Bonnell, I, I'm really if... gunning for him to get some, get some. Dude, he's a great writer, man. Nick Bonnell. Incredible writer. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I was getting paid a little bit. If I was getting like a, a note, I only have fit you know, and they, and they've really had my back for a long time and I have a lot of respect for them. But if I had like another sponsor and I had a little bit more income coming for it, I think I could dedicate more of my time to the BMX thing. Yeah. Um, but I can only ride once or twice a week now because I have to uh, make a living. Yeah. It's really difficult, man. BMX so how are you making a living? BMX is hard to make a living. Uh, what's, what's the studio plan? How's it going? Well, the, studio, the studio plan, it's, you know, this is, this is what it looks like here right now. Um, okay. It's night. It's nighttime, so you don't really get to see the light that comes in here. But um, eventually, once I get back from Italy, I go to Italy tomorrow to shoot a wedding, some millionaire's wedding. Nice. <laughs> really cool, actually. I never been That's to a wedding. That's very cool. Before. Yeah. So I get to go to Sicily. Sick. Congrats. Uh, I just How'd get, you get that gig. Uh, from from shooting Kim Kardashian. Get the hold on. What the fuck? <laughs> you didn't. Oh, you didn't pull this in your little notebook, bro. No, dude. You shot Kim Kardashian. <laughs> what? I Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> uh, I shot Kim Kardashian twice. I kicked it with her twice. Yeah, yeah. And I also, you know, if we're gonna talk about this, fuck it. Uh, I, I also did do a Lipa's tour for two days and got fired from that. But wow. Um, yeah, I did Kim Kardashian for her SNL debut. Cool. And then I did Kim Kardashian for Met Gala. So I spent a week with her for Met Gala and then a week with her for SNL. What does um, that mean if you spend a week with her? Like, like you meet they, up they at would, the hotel and follow yeah. them around and shoot photos of their day? Yeah, you, pretty you much. Doing it I film would, style? Like yep, my style. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I have I have images of Kanye and her that will stand the test. Like in 20 years, these images will be like, what the fuck? These are great. That's awesome. I can't share them. I can't show anybody of them because of I'll get yeah. sued. Yeah. Um, but I have some fucking cool images of her. And, uh, you know, I, I consider it kind of like not like Marilyn Monroe status. Like maybe one day, you know, she's like that level of fame. Oh, yeah. Uh, Even maybe bigger. one day, one day I'll have a, uh, you know, I'll have this archive of beautiful images. I do. I have them saved up here in my, in my studio. Negatives, not digital too. They're negatives, which is nice. really cool. Yeah, um, that is very cool. But yeah, the guy that I work with, David, uh, David Pruding, who runs BFA, which is a photography agency out here. He, uh, he took a liking to me, and I love this dude. And he just brings me on for special projects where they want me to shoot film. And Sick. I'm gonna shoot the wedding on a Super 8, and then shoot it on two contacts g2s so. so you're doing video and photo yeah same time same as i did so, with the kim stuff yeah. are you gonna be the lead or no, are no, you no. You're just like backup well, i'm the one who gets i'm the one who gets i'm the lead video okay um and it always goes hand in hand with like backup photos like i don't want to do structured portraits i want to shoot like images of like people in the bathroom getting fucked up yeah. And that's what I'll be doing. I'll be shooting like party images for them to have for their archive. Sick. Images that I'm also proud of. Like I'm not a wedding photographer. Yeah. If you're going to hire me, that means you're going to get my type of imagery. And that's what's beautiful about uh, being able to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. And, man. Uh, you know, that's like, I made like five grand doing that. So I'll get paid five racks and I'll live off of that for till the next one. Yeah, I'm very same. frugal. I'm very frugal yeah. these days, Bobby. Good very for you. frugal. I'm trying to be very frugal myself too. I just like grocery shopping and I'm not going to eat out for however long See, I, I, can. I eat out i eat out pretty much every day it's cheaper for me honestly yeah because i'll cook it and the food will go to waste because i'm always moving around i can't stay at home yeah that's I'm, I'm learning man it's, diff, it's 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 like where's where do i spend my money in it i can i could easily spend 50 60 bucks on food per day easy oh that's crazy um, yeah like I, but, spent, I spent 20 20 today i got three dollar dumplings and then um a 15 dollar burger from five guys but that's a specialty for me nice that's a party i wanted the energy for this podcast <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> carb up before we talk um but yeah the the studio by the way is going to be i'm going to start doing um, model shoots in here at some point okay in the near future and get get some stuff rolling there and build my portfolio up with that how do you market to start how does one start a studio and get business in there just well i have a lot your of network yeah, a lot of my friends are models. I have a lot of like, you know, 
a lot of people that want to shoot with me, I just tell them no, because my, I haven't established my style yet. I'm afraid to um, get them in here and then fail at it. So I wanted to wait until I get really, you know, it's basically finding your light. When you, when you try to become a, a fashion photographer, you can't really tell a difference between who shot that portrait and who shot that portrait. Yeah. So my, my journey as a photographer is to find my light. And uh, I've kind of finally figured out and envisioned myself on how I want to shoot in the studio. And now I'm kind of ready to like branch off and say, Hey, come to the studio and I'll do test shoots with new up and coming models and, and, uh, and be able to curate my own stories around it. And then if, you know, and then once you start doing that, you share them and people think, Oh, this, you start shooting. And I also do, I do some big fashion shoots with some companies sometimes. What do you mean when you say find your light? Are you talking light uh, as an in inspiration or a literal like, light style? I mean, like, uh, like this is a, I mean, it's not a good image for it, but just like your style, really, you know, like, a distinct you know, when, style of lighting you just, your subject. Lighting. Yeah. You're lighting okay. your subject or just like your distinct style. Like I want people to look at my images and be like, that's an Augie image. And that's what you mean and, by your light. Yeah. But your light, okay, it doesn't gotcha. necessarily mean the light itself. Literal it's lights. Like, yeah. yeah. It's just finding your, uh, you know, the way that you want to shoot. Oh. You know I mean, so just like, I think it, it just comes with time and, I, yeah, I would just be yeah. patient patient not, and yeah that's the other thing is like the artistic process there's no right or wrong way to do it like but no. i was gonna say this earlier like jumping in and do into doing a vlog every single day and like the crash course into videography and like an eye for stuff like talk about like way better than college make a vlog every oh, day for bro. 60 days you would, and then yeah. you're gonna what be a professional a videographer say. You know, if you, well, I mean, you, there's a way to do it too. I mean, there's some people that just don't have composition, bro. Yeah, that's true. There's some people, there's some people just really don't know what composition is. So, yeah. um, but if you really wanted to learn how to tell a story, try it for a week, wake up a day and just can, can, uh, use your life as the, the storytelling, you know, yeah. as the movie and you could probably get good at it. And yeah. storytelling is the very first aspect of making a video. Yep. You know, it's not just, important one. it's just telling the story. Yeah, that's what it all boils down to. And then all the other stuff is kind of just your your touch. I was yeah. um, talking to Peter Adam because he does a phenomenal job of like doing yep. that with BMX. Like he doesn't take away from the fact that it's a BMX video because it's focused on the riding, but his little touches like yep. and the amount of effort that goes into a three second clip at the beginning of the feast video. Like I heard a yep. story. He went down to the store to buy props for Nathan's like one second clip where he's smashing the alarm clock like you know, and then just the yeah, dude, going out in the rain and all that. Just him and his, him and Rich, yeah. Peter, yeah. Peter and Rich are my two favorites right They're now. Incredible, yeah. Um, two two incredibly distinct, two incredibly distinctive styles, way different from one another. Did you um, watch the Federal in Brussels? Not not yet. I saw the 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 um, the Jackman clip and the uh, who was the other clip that um, Boyd a, Boyd. That, dude, that the shit. downside whip on this like. The uh, thing is, the reason why that clip is so gnarly is that if you miss your foot, you're going in between those wires. And he did miss his foot on a clip and landed on it. And it scared the shit out of me, dude. But I'll That's tell you, because you haven't, at. you need to watch it because it's a departure from his usual style into a new style of like kind of loose and just like oh, no, really? no rules and like songs kind of come in and out, but it's just a consistent, it's like, it feels like you're hanging out with the federal team for 20 minutes and it is oh, I love that. magical. I was, yeah. cause like Rich started this wave of, you know, this type of <laughs> shit, you know, <laughs> and yeah. it has, and in the Joe Cox interview that I was talking about, Joe Cox started calling out people from copying him and it's become yeah. cliche. So like what Rich is doing now, as is like a, a whole nother revolution. There's been a lot of people that copied him, huh? Yeah. So I don't know hard. Any names, but yeah. which you know, no hate on them. Like we said at the beginning, like great artists copy or whatever steal. I forget what is the fucking quote, Austin. Bro, I did it. I did it with uh with uh, Jim Greco. Remember the Jobs Never, Jim Greco? No. You ever seen that film that he did? It's all uh -uh. sixteen millimeter. And it's funny you say, uh, who are you talking about before? Peter Adams. Yeah. We were we were in Hastings, and I was. Um, I, I kind of made a joke to Peter. I was like, yeah, man, nice, nice tripod shot or something. We, you know, we were, we were, we were having this shit at, at each other. And he goes, yeah, man, go make another Jim Greco fucking wannabe piece. You know, we laughed about it <laughs> because a lot of my stuff that I did from Cuba and, uh, he's um, quick my, like that, dude. My Dominican <laughs> Republic video. Well, I was hyped that Peter actually watched my videos. I was like, oh, you do know. Yeah. 
And I was like, oh, Peter, you got me. All right. Yeah. We love Peter. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. (laughs) I love Peter. I I got hammered with him uh, at the Mongoose Jam, man. So you got to meet his alter ego, Pete, 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 no, Peter Juice. I don't think I've ever seen his alter ego. Peter Juice. He has Pete. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen. Did you do an interview with him? Mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't seen it. It hasn't dropped. Else. So next week, or like this, this one is going to come out in three weeks. Um, we got Casey Starling from Kink coming next Monday. We nice. got Peter Adam the following Monday, and then you will be that next Monday. You got I'm some good kinda, you got some good ones, man. Yeah, just people I want to talk to, you know what I'm saying? I'm well, glad you I would hit love me to up. see Tony Maloof. Yeah. That we did one, but that was like three years ago. But yeah. it exists if you want to go listen to that that one. It was it was it was just a Zach one, the Craigslist ones, because I he was just out here and um I really admired the dude and I love what the Sunday the Sunday guys really are my favorite team at the moment. They really are the best person. When, you get, too, when yeah. they get around each other, it's like I mean I love Julian, I love Brett. Mm-hmm. Aaron too. I didn't really know Aaron that well, but he came out here for Don of the Streets, and he's just such a cool. Yeah, I used to watch him in Odyssey Electronical, man, and he yeah. was out here. He's like, "Oh, this is so sick." I'm like, "What?" This yeah, is... but you guys are my idols, bro. Odyssey Electric, chill, bro. Yeah, for real though. Yeah, chill, chill bro, bro, dude. Yeah. Like, is that the one with man. the Rick Ross song? Yep. Yep. Every day yeah, I'm dude. hustling. <laughs> <laughs> He but broke yeah, his man. chain and then he's running with his bike to do that long ice 180. Beautiful. Yeah. He did that fakie hop recently. Over that yeah, rail. unbelievable. Crazy. It's one of the coolest tricks, honestly. Yeah. And he's like, what, 35? Yeah, and he's uh, he's Almost in real 40. estate. He's in real estate. He yeah. hit, he saw that real estate was in my bio at one point. At one point, I was inspired. I was going to be, I was hanging out with these guys that I make videos for. And yeah. And I was like, I'm going to put real estate investor in my bio. And then Aaron Are they Ross, millionaires, the guys you work for? They make millionaires? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, really? big time, big time. What's the? Have you ever hung out with a billionaire? Uh, Grant Cardone is probably a billionaire. I've been in the same room as him and exchanged words with him. But uh, yeah, no, nice. I, I lucked out getting to work for these these guys. They're a different breed, huh? Yeah, they just go go go. They they you remind me of them. Like it's just yeah. you know they like pace especially just manifest and make shit happen like. I met him. Yeah, I wish I was better ago. making money though, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, get into and real they, estate investing. <laughs> no, dude, I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm an artist. It's, I'm a pro artist for the rest of my life. It would be pretty rad to make a living just being a dope photographer and living that life. I'm going to, yeah. I will. One I more. believe it. I don't know how long it takes. I don't know how long it's going to take, but we'll see. Uh, um, you want to talk about your dog? Tell me about your dog. Tonka truck? Tonka truck? Is that your dog's name? Yeah, Tonka truck, man. He's he's a good dude, dude. He uh he, he just got back from the vet. He has he had a an eye infection. Um he had an eye allergy, but he's dude, he's the coolest dude. I wish he was with me now. Um, but I'm in Red Hook right now. I I took I don't have a great lighting in my apartment, so I rode over here not only to do the do the podcast, but also I need to finish up today's video. So I came to the studio and just kind of did some other things. Nice. Just because the lighting here is a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, but it's like a 15 minute bike ride. Good for you. That's fucking that's, awesome, man. But Tonka Truck Man is a I I I rescued him when he was a month old in, in Los Angeles. Okay. And he was this small, bro. His yeah. dad was like uh like the sandlot dog. Mm-hmm. So I knew he was gonna be big, but um when we came back from when I when I brought him over to, to LA, uh, from LA to New York, he was so small that I could fit him in my like my my satchel. Sick. So when I got my ticket, I got him past the the ticket agents without them charging me for the dog. Nice. Obviously, when you go through TSA, they, you know, they they know the dog's there. They didn't give yeah. a fuck. It's the ticket people you got to worry about. Nice. So we get him on the plane. We're having a red eye. This dude has, you know, don't know this guy from squad. I don't know what he's eating. He shits on the plane, bro. <laughs> the gnarliest shits. Bro, I'm talking watery, gross <laughs> shits. Ugh. And I'm like, I'm like sleeping. I, I smell. He goes, you know, he's walling in it. He's walling in his shit in his bag. And I had to take my sweatshirt off, wrap all the poop up. I look back and the whole. Everybody's uh, looking at you. Everyone's <laughs> looking at me going like this. They're going. <laughs> they're like scolding me. And I had to like take him to the restroom and wash him <laughs> off in the little sink. Yeah. But yeah, now he's, uh, he's about three years old. And Dude, that's a core life there. memory right there. Dude, <laughs> you want to piss the people off on an airplane? Yeah. Bring, a bring a dog a in there and just let him shit. <laughs> it's, that might be too, worse. Yeah. No, like you want to piss people off, bring a baby. You want to make them extremely mad, bring a dog and have them sh- diarrhea. Because all over babies the place. can poop in a diaper. Dogs shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, for real. Yeah, but babies is. cry, so maybe you know it's a, it's a it even. I hate out. people who get mad at babies on plane, bro. It's not their fault. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. Just put some headphones in. Get some yeah. get some good headphones. Buy a first class ticket. Um, I guess we can we can go back to uh, Texas Toast. You, uh, you can, you yes, can that's your last on your list, huh? No, I got a, I got a couple more. So I want to talk to you about your like proudest trick and your your like proudest clip that you've ever filmed or shot a photo of, um, yeah. and then your biggest accomplishment in BMX or what you're most like happy about in your YouTube career. Okay. So I guess let's let's start there. I guess we can start, we can we'll start with Texas, Texas Toast. Though. Start with Texas Toast. Hit me we with. We gotta it. have Texas Toast because Edwin De La Rosa slapped the guy in the face with a piece of pizza. <laughs> All right, let's go. And he. Uh, I love Edwin now, by the way, we're, we're, you know, not close to him, not here at all, but like we're familiar. I gave him the legends award. Sick. Yeah. I gave it to Joey to give to him, you know, Ryan Fudger sent me the legends Nora cup award this year. For, for, so I got to like open up the box and be like, Oh, this is Edwin De La Rosa's Nora cup. Like I had it. Like, Hell really, yeah. Sick. Really dope. Yeah. But that's when I first met Hoder, uh, Sean shitty Mac, you know, where they got we all remember when they got on stage and started screaming for those. You remember that? No, dude, it's all a blur. Dude, your memory is <laughs> fucked, Bob. Yeah, sure you're gonna is. get this checked out, dude. I, I feel pretty. <laughs> you're making me feel real good about myself because my memory is top notch at the moment. Um, Paint the picture a little more. Sean Mack and Hoder getting well, on stage. I don't want to. I don't want to this... talk about what they yelled out on the stage. No, this is yeah. this is Nora Cup stage. Nora Cup. Okay. Yeah, Nora Cup stage. Okay. This is when I first met Nathan Williams, Corey Martinez. Okay. Like, oh, dude, that was such a. Cr- I, I won't go into more details of like. Cause we were all hammered drunk, but yeah, Joey. Miles oh, I us. remember what they were screaming about. Okay, got you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> uh, yes, no, I remember. Remember, remember, was it Nora Cup? No, after party, not Nora Cup, but the after party. That that arena. I remember. I remember. I never met Garrett Reynolds or Ty Mara when I helped Garrett Reynolds open up his his thing to go buy booze. Like the the Nora Cup. No, maybe it was a Texas Toast Award after party. Okay. So Texas Toast, they give you like a, a, a jar of money. Okay. And, and I remember being at the after party and like helping Garrett Reynolds. Like I was, this is like, this is amazing to me. I was like, bro, I'm helping Garrett Reynolds open up this thing. He's buying me drinks. Ty Morrow just dapped me up. Like, yes. And um, I remember this might, this might, might've been where I got pink eye, but Joey Mata, you know, we got so drunk. Tony Maloof, uh, left us remember we had we all had to sleep on top oh of yeah the van. yeah did you I sleep on top of the van with us no i remember oh dude yes i found a tinder date and went and crashed at her place yeah and then so you came back in the morning yeah so joey mata uh, matt osborne all yep. of us had to sleep after the party we were the only ones out there in the parking lot because fucking maloof had the keys yep and, and he we bounced this- and he went off with some broad too no, he went and stayed at a friend's house. You should ask him about this story. Okay. And he has a whole other story that would blow your fucking mind. <laughs> but I, I remember Joey Mata slept on top of the van. I slept on the floor of uh Is this a year that ground. Mediocre got nominated? Is that? I th- Maybe. I, re- I, I remember we going went. out to Texas. Okay. The, okay. Yes. That's why we went. Yeah. Yeah. And But but yeah, Joey Mata took me by my feet and spin me around and did hopscotch over me. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was crazy. I got I think I got pink eye from that, actually. That's funny. Texas fun. Toast is crazy, man. Yeah, just and living the maybe, ratty maybe BMX the life. Part out where he where he slapped the guy with the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I think crazy. he vouched for that. <laughs> I don't know. Give me a bite of your pizza. He goes, no, man. <laughs> Slap him. <man. laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's you a don't magical. Know who Edwin is. You got to respect that one, man. Edwin's Legend. a G. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Can- who who's who goes up to Edwin De La Rosa and says, "Give me a bite of your pizza." <laughs> no, 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 no. Edwin went up to the kid and asked for a bite of his pizza. Oh! <laughs> Edwin took the pizza and slapped him <laughs> in the face. <laughs> well, listen, we were all drunk, you know. I don't want to throw him under the bus or nothing. He's a great dude. He uh, no. he's doing really cool shit. He shot the GX one thousand um ad on film. Sick. So he shot. He's really close to those guys. Rat Kid was in it. Dope. Yeah, dude. Edwin's a G man, and I'm I'm stoked to be able to call him a. Uh, somewhat of a friend you know i gotta look up edwin gx 1000 yeah you'll see rat kid in there it's like just some some uh, point and shoot photos interesting he has I'll an nft he yeah. has an nft out joe uh edwin does dope yeah he's do a cool you dude, do you fuck with the nft world i don't have i don't have the time to do it right now man i'm just trying to get my shit together at the moment so i don't even understand what i would want to do if i i did just an dude, NFT, the thing is know? man is that as an artist 
you hop in to do an NFT, you're not an established artist yet. I want to be established. Like I don't, I want to go to the trenches. It's just like BMX. Yeah. Put me through the fucking trenches before I go and really take anything. Yeah. More from it than I, I deserve. You know? It seems like, you know, once you learn, cause you and I both have learned the process of, you know, climbing your way through a scene and like yeah. establishing yourself in an industry and that experience alone is so valuable because you can take that and apply that to your modeling career or your photography Everything. career my outside videography career like you kind of understand how it works and it's pretty cool i think yeah it, at the end of the day you realize everybody's just a person and we're all trying to yeah, just dude. get by make make money doing something we like doing if you're lucky you know and then yep. And that's the cool thing is yeah. if you can do things that you like doing and make money from it, that's like the fucking dream. Yeah. Because I will not ever go back to working for somebody else. I'll fucking pack my shit up, take my camera, and document me traveling around the world broke as fuck before I go and work for somebody else. Yeah. And like, then I'm something not... good will happen again. You know? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I... Don't 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 fall to don't fall into the fucking the trap of what they tell us to do, man. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I agree. I'll get sucked into that conversation. I can't stand the, the rules set forth by society. Yeah. It's great. All right. What about, so BMX wise, you on the bike, what's your favorite, proudest, scariest, coolest shit that you've ever done? Uh, one, so one of my favorite tricks is the 180 through the tree. Yeah. Um, that I showed you a photo of that Jeff mm -hmm. C shot. One of those reasons why that is because Jeff C shot it and I love him. And um, uh, two, uh, Dylan Lloyd, trucked it through the tree and then remember um what's his face the Jono? new zealand cat Jono whipped through it yeah unreal so that was just like a such a legendary session that i was a part of and that was really meaningful to me um but what, what else did you ask my favorite trick yeah your proudest you know cl or clip or like proudest trick or clip is what i wrote down but that 180 proudest, is pretty good the 180 definitely um and then the Tony Maloof has this clip no one's ever going to see, but the, uh, um, that high school down in Hollywood, Fairmount High School or, or some Fremont High School, um, there's a big 22 stair rail. And at the very end of it, it's a yellow post. So instead of going to the left of it and like pulling off, I went down the 22 stair rail, then hopped over, over, so it's like a down rail hop over. It's so yeah. gnarly, had long hair. Tony Nyer was there. Like all these dudes, I again, it's not just about the trick. It's about the people that I respect that were around me. Yeah. And I tried it for like an hour, dude, just getting bodied, bodied. <sighs> and then I just fucking landed it. And it was just such a beautiful moment. But it's that a magical maybe, feeling. Maybe, 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 maybe we can just have Maloof send it through to you just for the sake of this. No, nah, you just got to manifest 1235 coming out. It will. You just got to keep believing, man. Don't I agree, stop man. believing. I fucking agree. <laughs> put it out, baby. Maybe it'll resurrect my BMX career. <laughs> uh, and then YouTube or outside of BMX, like what's your proudest accomplishment? I mean, you shot Kim Kardashian. That's pretty dope. I mean, that's pretty cool, man. But I don't think I've, I have my proudest moment. Ever <clears> it, you know, I mean, I put my book out. I put my, my, my photography book out during COVID cool but that wasn't really that as uh, exhilarating as i thought it would be um, just because i kind of again putting photo books out you can easily do that stuff now. you can easily just pop in and, um, and put your photos into a book and do it but as i've grown as a photographer i learned that you know you can curate your images you can pick the best of the best and i don't think i've hit that moment yet of my of the you know shooting kim was cool but dude, they're just another people yeah you know kim's exactly. just another fucking person who takes her money and hoards it away and it's going to die with it there and her kids are going to have it and the kardashian kids are going to be famous and it's going to be a never-ending fucking cycle of kardashian <laughs> hell i think she's doing some good stuff dude <laughs> i don't know bro i i, I love I, I i love shooting photos but i don't know about the celebrity end of it those those maybe she is she's not going to watch this yeah she's doing good stuff yeah <laughs> kim's doing great stuff dude well from what i heard like she's doing some prison reform stuff and uh it's yeah, all, uh, I think that's game, probably bro. the could it's all, all just game. be PR, you know? Yeah, dude, yeah, it's all PR. Maybe she does watch this. I never get hired by her again. <laughs> oh, dude, imagine. I got Hi, Kim. Before you go, before we go, yeah, I I got hired to do Dua Lipa's tour, to yeah. to direct her tour documentary. Amazing. Right? Yeah. So really great opportunity. One hundred fifty thousand dollars. Beautiful. Seven seven months. Right. I was gonna be on the road with her. They hired me. They came to New York. I did Madison Square Garden. I did Washington, D.C. And um, 
on this tour, I, I only spent, I spent one day on the tour bus with like, she had another photographer mm -hmm. and uh, we had lunch at Madison Square Garden. This photographer asked me, how did, you know, how'd you get this job? And I said, it's from Kim Kardashian's shoot. And she goes, can I see the images? I was like, ah, I'm not allowed to show them to you. I'll get sued. You know, they're all on my computer. You know, I just, I'd rather not show them. And they go, oh, yeah, I understand. Um, fast forward, we come back to Newark, New Jersey. So the next stop was Newark. So after Washington, Newark. I get a phone call from my agent and they go, hey, Augie, uh, bad news. They're not going to move forward with you. I'm like, well, what? They just told me I was like on this tour for seven months. Like I just went and bought a thousand dollars worth of film. Like I'm good to go. And they go, no, no. They just, they're worried about you and your, and your legal battle with Kim. What? what? Legal battle? <laughs> I was like legal battle with Kim? Like what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and it turns out that the photographer didn't like me being on, on the, the girl photographer didn't like me being on there. Huh. And I think it was too. That was a straight white male. I didn't like that because everyone else on there was gay and I was straight and I was getting really close to duo over the first two days. Like we were discussing how we're going to do this and uh, they fucking fired me, bro. Damn. From Dua Lipa's tour, dude. Talk dude, about like high to. <laughs> oh, bro. I couldn't get off the couch for two days. I, I was the best again. Yeah. yeah. 100 it was life-changing money, bro. I hope that she watches this. I hope that photographer somehow comes across this and realizes that <laughs> she fucks some stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, dude. Shit. What's in the... Been... You just did 24 so far? How far are you in the 60-day yeah. challenge? So the videos haven't been the, uh, congruent. Is that the word for it? They haven't been, like, consecutive. I've kind of fell behind a couple days. So yeah. they're not as, like, as... They're pretty much every day. Maybe I missed a couple, but yeah, I'm going to keep doing it until I'm sick of it, to be honest. That's dope. I'm excited to see the ones that you dropped from your trip to Sicily. I mean, that's a whole other chore on top of yeah, going but, to shoot an actual wedding, but documenting but that's it and releasing about, stuff. That's the beautiful about shooting this stuff, man, is that you shoot it, it's gone. I don't have to go to my computer and do work. I just put it in my bag. That is beautiful. I get home. So that's I don't a cheat have to do code. Much work. Yeah, dude, dude, I'm gonna start doing my Instagram reels work in film. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting at all 16. Yeah. All right, boss, give me some tips about real estate. <laughs> you imagine? That yeah. would be an actual a viral, a viral. Uh, you should try that one day, actually. Just yeah. For, for the same I really, day. I would love to bring mixed mediums. I've seen a trend that's kind of going off where like little pieces of an image come up, and then the rest of the image comes in and fills it. It's a video of photos, and it's just like yeah. a. I'm sure you've seen it. It's a you know moving collage and it's kind of appealing and it all looks cool and makes me want to get a film camera or take oh, photos dude. that I've already shot and like convert it to a film look and mess around with that type Bro, of stuff. You should get you gotta get a film camera, man, because you know, these like this guy here. I mean these guys they make these photo books, bro. And it's just it's so cool to have these memories of these time periods, bro. Like look at this image. Oh shit, yeah. It's just powerful shit, man. Damn. Yeah. This what is, is that? Edward, this is a uh, Ed Van, uh, Van der Elskin. He's a Dutch photographer. Ed Van der Elskin. Oh yeah, bro. He, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of timeless imagery. Like look at this shit, man. You can't. Yeah, for real. You know what I mean? That's, when like, is that's that what from? I want. This is from, I think it's probably from, uh, 1959, 1966 and 1988. That's crazy. I was just looking at this like, colorized footage of Paris in 1900, and I was like blown away. Yeah, dude. It, humans yeah, dude, it's, it's will be humans. Probably, you know? Yep. The problem now, yeah. dude, is that you have people wearing too many colors and too many logos on their shirts. It takes away from the image. True. That's yeah, we, we dressed all uniform like 60 years ago. There was no Nike t-shirts. I'm about to get on that, that, that tip. The no... Just, well, logos. I mean, I only, wear, I only wear plain clothes anyway. All vintage uh, recycled clothes. I can't find new shit anymore. I feel too bad about it. I don't I don't rock logos unless uh, it's my shit, you know? And they pay you. Or my boss's shit. Yeah. <laughs> How long do we do this for, Bob? How long is this time? It's been an hour and 50 minutes. Not a bad, not a bad call. Do you have anything, you have anything yeah. else on your, on your to-do list there? Uh, I want to know, you know, some, like, that's a first Ed Van Der Elskin. Who other, what other inspirations do you have photography wise that I could take a look at? Uh, I mean, dude, this is like the, the fucking God of street photography. He's the one who started it. Henry cartier person Henry what? cartier person You never heard of Henry cartier person I may have. Oh man. Um, yeah, dude, he's, he's one of the best. He, he's, 
he's the best he's the one who did it um who's the one that shot street photography in new york of just like people and he's really famous for it is that him is he is he is he new no old 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 and he's still doing it i think and he Bruce just walks maybe that could be Can it. Get, do we have time to grab the book yeah go for it you gotta see this guy this is bruce, bruce, gilden. bruce gilden So when I was making big bread, when I had like lots of money, I just was buying books. Sick. So I, I bought this one. This one's crazy. This is like going to be worth a lot of money one day. It's a Gucci book. A Gucci book. Yeah. Look at this. It's gold. Ooh. It's velvet. Beaten and blown by the what? Um, by the wind. I don't Beautiful. open this up too heavy. Dude. Yeah. But I try to keep this one. This is like, I shouldn't have even brought this out of the bag. But this is his uh, photography from Japan, and he like went and documented um, the Yakuza back when they were still present. Bro, this shit is like, whoa, whoa, dude. Wait, there's even yeah. like, like his shit. He had like super slow shutter speed. That's interesting. Oh man, there's a whole world of like that's yeah. just like the photography, street photography is closer to as close as i ever got to street riding i believe it yeah and it's with only I with film that. only yeah. with film can that be uh, achieved because you don't get to see the fruits of your labor until you go go back to your uh development you scan it you get to see the image it's like yeah it's like landing a trick really how many shots are on a roll 36 so you gotta like you're not you gotta just click i'm pretty i'm pretty move on to the next moment depends on if the if the if the you know, if the scene's opening up to me and I can really get in there and get a better shot. Um, yeah. This dude, Henry Cartier Brisson was, I just finished his biography and he, um, he was very much, he would not shoot one or two frames per, per scene. There's only he a couple of times he ever shot two frames. So he was always like very com composed. Just one. And one shot. And then he's, his images have really stand the test of time. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. dude. It's, you can see, I mean, it's like my, this is probably why my BMX career is going to probably end very soon is that I care more about photography than I do BMX, but and that's okay. I love BMX. Yeah. It is okay, man. Yeah, it is okay. But... And we can't beat ourselves up for like living lives. We're getting older. How old are you now? Almost 30? 30? Years old. 30? I turned 30 uh, June 15th in Paris, France. Hell yeah. Well, happy late birthday. Thank that's you, crazy. Man. Yeah. 30 is a old, huh? big one. Yeah. 30 is a big one. That's, I was like 28 and a half turning 29 when I started realizing, oh shit, I'm going to be here for a while. I got to start taking care of myself, you know, like it's pretty. Yeah. I hope things, shoo. I hope this, I hope, uh, I hope it all pays off, man. I just, yeah, 30 is, 30 is a good year. Yeah. So. The 40 is the new 30. So we're chilling. Well, shit, dude, the way, the way technology is going, man, I imagine we're probably both going to live to be 120 or so. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Or, I swear, I think or we all get wiped out. Like you said. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a blessing in disguise right there baby you will live in a pod and you will eat bugs you will own nothing and be happy dude dude how do you know the great don't worry reset, about it don't dude. worry about it reset, don't worry. We, don't need, we don't need to talk about that <laughs> the great reset all right uh what are you shooting your vlogs or what are you shooting your videos on now not film uh, i've had this camera for six years lumix thailand, thailand was filmed on this gh5 look at the sick thing. yeah that still holds up, man. Dude, this camera, bro, I shoot it 4K. Yeah. It's great, man. Beautiful. Yep. Shoot it on GH5. If you guys are watching this, you want to listen to a story and follow a, a journey of a struggling artist, that's what my YouTube channel is about now. It's not po toxic positivity. You're going to, you know, it's a real life story. I'm not sitting here um, making content to please the masses. I'm just, I'm, I'm creating pieces of work that I can look back on and be like, this is what I was going through at this time period. That's what That's my dogs are now. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's inspiring. It's, I want to do crazy. something similar. It's just crazy to talk to you too, man. Like I, I figured like so much has changed since I've known you, like, you know, we used to hang out on a, almost a, a semi weekly basis, you know, yeah, we, we was, we was biking. Yeah, dude. It's just, it's just crazy to see 
the internet, one beautiful thing of the internet is we get to see and keep up with our friends and how we've transitioned and what we've come into. That's yeah. one thing I love the internet for is the connection of it. Yeah. Uh, that is the beautiful vision. That's like Mark Zuckerberg's, you know, candy yeah. coating of, you know, there's a lot of evil shit, but the good part is we're all connected now. I don't want to go back to not pre-internet, you know? Yeah. On one hand, I do. I want to live on a farm and self-sustain yeah. and all that, but you can still do we're that doing this thing. internet life. Yeah. yeah. I could, I could do this from, you know, off the grid, but we'll get yeah, there. You, you, you know, you, you've, you're one of the rare dudes that kind of found yourself in a, in a, a compromised position where you feel like you needed to change and you did it. Not many people can, can make the change. Changing is the hard part. So it's like, it's cool to kind of see Osborne too, Matt Osborne, man, one of my best friends back then. Yeah. He's transitioned. He does all this car stuff now. It's yep. like, it's cool where people find their light. Yeah. How lost we were when we were young BMX riders, all ratty kids and like how we've kind of find our vision and how we've kind of blossomed into the people that we are now. And it's a really beautiful, beautiful thing. So, yes, sir. And we're all just people. How much is your Patreon? Uh, I don't know. Five bucks, four bucks, three bucks, two bucks, whatever you want to put. Well, if you made it this far, you should sign up for Austin's Patreon and help him help a starving artist live the yeah, dream. That's true, bro. I mean, hey, I had a five guys burger today, so I'm not starving too much. So don't, <laughs> let's not let's not put that out there. But, you know, it's a cliche, help me, dude. Help me buy. <laughs> You're film. not a starving artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Well, you we will be it, the second Patreon that I sign up for. The only other one is Tim Dillon. And, uh, oh, I fucking do. This is yeah. where we connected. Where I love Tim yeah. Dillon, bro. Yeah. He's, He's the, the funniest dude, dude on, the, on the planet right he now. He really is, 100%. <laughs> yeah. like, just goes, podcasting. My just... mom's a schizophrenic. I hope <laughs> yeah. he dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah, dude. And the way he picks um, on his producer is fucking hilarious, too. Ben, ben Avery. That's my dream. Yep. I want to go on Tim Dillon's podcast one day. Hell yeah. And I will. Yeah. I think so. All right, write it down and it will happen. Yep. Just like everything else that happened in your life, you mystical creature, Austin Augie. Well, yeah. Bob, I mean, dude, this conversation, I hope, didn't annoy people. And I think it was a beautiful conversation, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too, man. It's good I to catch really, up. I, uh, Thanks for filling in some blanks in my memories of Texas Toast. Like it all came kind of rushing back. Of just yeah, like, dude. It was that Texas Toast that Rich Forn, I, that's the first time I met Rich Forn. And he, I was like, Rich Forn. And he was like, Canode? Like he knew who I was. I was like, get the, oh, the fuck out of here. Yeah, and he bought me a drink. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. See, this dude? is so crazy. He's, he, uh, I'm glad that it's cool too to be able to call these people my friends in the BMX world, like Rich Foreign. Like I've been around the world with him. and That's amazing. He's, he's a cool motherfucker. Yeah. He's a funny motherfucker it. too, dude. Yeah. He's a funny motherfucker. You really got to watch the federal video because Bruno gets mad at him at like 11 minutes in and it is, it's so good. Oh, dude, dude yeah. that's who you got to, you got to get Bacos on. Yeah, yeah, I do. Because yep. Bacchus will have, they have some funny, and then Bruno too, they have these funny stories. Anytime you go to a contest, um, it, I went to, to uh, what's it called, um, Street Station. Yeah. And it's just funny because they just came off that Brussels trip. They were all on that trip. Yeah. And there's like these crazy stories that they're flying out about these, like, you know, they got into a fight at the bar because Bruno got mad at Rich, Rich got mad at Bacchus, and then someone threw a wine bottle. It's just like these <laughs> really intriguing stories that we'll share with you. And, yes. Yeah. You should get them on. I would love to, man. Rich Forn is just like one of those ones where it's like, I almost don't want him to come on just so I can keep the he mystery. Probably wouldn't. They yeah. probably wouldn't. <laughs> that's, we that's almost the filmed a fit video together. We mm -hmm. almost had a fit. Yeah, we were trying to do something really, really cool, but um, they wouldn't pay. No one wanted to pay his. He, he has a pretty big price tag, and that's what I, I respect. So Yeah, good for him. That's something that yeah. I, I think is a good lesson that kids out there should learn is like, if you're know good, good at something, don't do it for free. You know, then oh, know yeah. your worth earn your worth but then know your worth you know exactly at, at the beginning you gotta grind like a little grunt and do shit for <laughs> way more work than you think for way little money but then you establish yourself and value yourself and don't yes, and, yeah it's pretty cool all right Austin. Well, man to bobby it's great to see you man i'm gonna head to bed me too cheers dude uh any last words advice etc to the peoples to the bmx riders all across the world just uh be a good human man believe in yourself dude it sounds so cliche fuck but a lot of people say it but they don't so just don't be uh don't be uh, self-deprecating we all fall victim to that so thanks i appreciate you bobby appreciate you too cheers hello you've reached the end of the video thank you for tuning in if you're watching on youtube don't forget to like and subscribe see you in the next one might be lewis mills next week we'll see <laughs>